All right, uh, I am call at 6.33, I'm calling to order the meeting of the Woodstock Economic Development Commission, November 2nd. Uh, the agenda is up on the screen. Um, addition, we'll take citizen comments. Um, as always, we usually prefer to accept citizen comments when we are talking about the topic. If you have something that's not, we almost always have time for them at that time. If you want to talk about something that's not on the agenda, you can do it at citizen comments. There's three items of old, old business, a follow-up discussion of the emergency fund that we started to talk about two meetings ago, uh, proposal for sunset clause language, which we agreed we would have sunset clauses on our grants going forward, uh, but we and we have a literary subcommittee of Larry and Todd who have drafted the language and for our approval and talking about the scheduling of the community grant process, um, a very brief discussion. We have four new business items, two incentives, a rental incentive application for the rental program. Now, most of our incentives have been for the ADU program. This is for the rental program. Uh, the empty storefront incentive, uh, we have an application after 18 months, 24 months, we haven't had one. Um, and then the main, I think, time will be spent on a tourism strategy discussion as I laid out in the memo and very brief update on the EDC business loan fund which has not moved anywhere and therefore we want to acknowledge that it hasn't moved. Um, are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? Any team members? Okay, hearing none, citizen comments. Are there any citizen comments on topics other than what's on the agenda? I'm looking at our three citizens here. Do we have any citizens online? We have a few. Um, any any um, comments? Okay, old business, follow-up discussion of an emergency fund. So, um, sorry, just briefly for those of you who are here or not on the EDC, we now miraculously, as I noted in the listserv, have sent out a memo of two or three days in advance of the meeting that summarizes what's going to take place at the meeting and puts some context around the issues that are on the agenda and so if you can make the meeting it's great to read the two-page memo because it'll put things in context if you can't make the meeting it'll give you a quick uh, three-minute update of what discussion that you missed so uh, hopefully you'll take advantage of that so i think you know the last time we had this discussion um i think the group was split uh the idea of as i put in the in the memo the main argument that I've heard in support of, uh, of establishing an emergency fund is that in emergencies, the funds need to be distributed immediately within a few weeks. All of our other grants are the funds get distributed and dispersed over the course of a year or 18 months. And that getting caught without funds in the bank or without unencumbered funds, which caught us this past time on the lost wages program or without or or getting caught without cash in the bank, which has never happened because we always have excess cash, um, could limit our decision making. The arguments I've heard in opposed to establishing a fund is that why make the decision now when we make you know we have more flexibility to make it later. So I don't know, Joe. I know you would like to talk about this, and if there are any anyone else who would like to discuss it as well, do you want to? Would would you, you rather? Start? Yeah, go ahead. Um, well, mind you, the concept is if um, the last time we had this issue was the flooding, and um, it was obvious that some of the employees in town needed some help. So uh, we got together. I was on a subcommittee with uh, Liz Green, and um, we got together with. <clears throat> we'll start in and Joe Davies from Hub and try to work out something where, you know, the, the employees do not, no fault of their own, are going to be out of work for a couple of weeks. So, you know, they're the danger of losing them. They'll get a job someplace else if they can't. And there's plenty of opportunity. We all know that everywhere to get another job. And that would leave the existing businesses when the so called crisis is over without help. So how can we help them stay put where they are and get through this crisis? 
And um, there, I know John mentioned there was someone in the back, but it wasn't a whole lot. And I think what we wound up doing was getting private funds. And well, first of all, HUD tried to help out, and that wasn't successful because there's a process based on how to do business that was really involved in how to be readjusted and made usable for this specific purpose. And it really wasn't going to work. And uh, I guess there were some private donations that really came up with some money that we could distribute among the employees who were out of work. Well, rather than going through that, I'm thinking, why don't we just set up a little fund where we can set aside $20,000 a year, cap it at $100,000. And if, and not set in stone, if, if say we get to a point where we, we have accumulated $60,000, if something comes up that really needs to be addressed, well, we can take it from that, some of it, and then continue to build on after that. Um, it, it just occurred to me that, you know, we had some major uh, programs that people worked very hard on. And I think, and a lot of people think, are very successful. We spent a lot of time as a committee, as a commission on um, housing, employee housing, people who work in town can maybe afford to live in town which would be a really unique idea, and um, childcare, so that people who want to work can have someplace safe, sound, and great that they can leave the kids so they can go to work. Well, why not help them stay on the job? Why not, you know, make, make it uh, um, available some money that, you know, they can, so they're not going to flee and go someplace to work. I mean, I'll give you one glaring example we have is the Woodstock Farmers Market. They were open six days a week, pre-flood, post-flood, five days a week because they don't have enough staff. While it was going on, people get jobs up someplace else. Um, I don't think it's good for, obviously it's not good for the business. I don't think it's good for the community either. Not to have that place available to go shopping. So anyway, that's that's the idea, and um, it seems to me that you know if we're going to have, and it's not a lot of money, twenty grand a year, compared to you know a larger amount that we had for housing and and childcare that that we're able to put together, and great and great great projects, and just very successful. And, uh, all the alkalis you could you could possibly do. So why not take care of the people so they can stay on the job, and the businesses don't suffer from loss of employees after the sudden such crisis is over. That's about it. Okay. Any other any comments? Other comments? I have one comment, which is sorry. Oh, Beth. Oh, yes, you do have a hand raised. Sorry. No, she's muted. Okay, you're not raising your hand. Is that correct? Just give no, it. I had a point of order question. I can ask after this discussion. Okay, great. If you just you just jump in and remind me if I don't see the hand, because I'm not looking at that all the time. So just unmute yourself and remind. Me. Okay, fine. If you're going to monitor, that's great. Patrick used to do that, but you can be the new Patrick. Uh, I, it sounds, Joe, as if you're you're right now discussing the merits of of giving money, uh, of responding to crises. Um, I think which everyone unanimously agreed we should do, and we did. Um, I think the question is whether or not to set aside money for for crises that will happen in the future, which we will then have to decide whether to support or not. You, I think most of us. That's not exactly right. Well, 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 so that, okay, go ahead. I mean, uh, to think that something that might interrupt a work week and have an effect on a commercial district, think that that might never happen again, I think is a bit naive. But I think the better way to go, in my opinion, is handle this more professionally, um, more in a 
um, I don't want to use the word adult, but with, with some thoughtfulness and some being prepared for something that we all know, maybe it won't, we hope it doesn't, but it's probably going to happen again at some point. And instead of scrambling around like we had to do last time, you know, you got any money? I don't know. Uh, we have some, but not a lot. How about you guys? Where can we get some money? Instead of doing it that way, what can we just be prepared in a more professional way? Well, I would argue, it just sorry, just, I, I would argue that the last time we didn't scrounge around for money, we had $450,000, well, sorry, $650,000 in cash. Um, it's now down considerably. I don't know. It's three hundred thousand or something because we've given out some of the housing. I mean, the uh, the childcare grants, which are very big. Um, I don't think we were constrained at all the last time. I think we decided. Then why did we have to come up with private funds to get it done? We didn't have to come up with private funds to get it done. We actually agree. We got it. We came up with private funds to get it done. Yeah. But but we didn't. We we didn't. We didn't have to. We we committed the full amount. And I think what we had available was like thirty-five, forty thousand dollars. All right. So I think what's it? go ahead, Marion, and then I'll yeah. You can finish your point. I think I think what I think what well I think what's important to to discuss is the difference between unencumbered funds and cash in the bank. So we at the time we currently have no unencumbered funds. We have promised all of the money that we expect to get this year to the initiatives that we've promised it to. And at the time of the emergency, we were, I think we had $40,000 or so in unencumbered funds. Right. Um, we, the, the, we didn't, I, we didn't decide to, well, we did, we took some risk of, we, we decided to borrow a little bit into the next year. Um, and I, I made the estimate and I do this sort of on a semi-regular basis of saying, look, let's not, we're not likely to get requests for the encumbered funds that will deplete us of care. We're not likely to run out of cash. And so therefore, you know, and no one asked, you know, what if we want to give $250,000 to the lost wages fund? If they had, we would, we could have, we could have decided whether or not that you know we had that much cash availability but John, excuse me but if i remember correctly there was even some discussion well we don't have enough money to do this the way we'd like to do it so there was some discussion and i remember distinctly in talking to eric duffy about it was well there's money that has been granted that's not being used right now why can't we borrow from that and and, and, and replace it next year right. Well, it's, again, my point is, instead of going to all that, why can't we just be prepared? There's like a well-organized There's enough. There is, that we are. There is no all that. It's just deciding to give more money to the program. What, what, I, what I told Eric when Eric suggested that was, we, no, what, what Eric had suggested was, can we take money back from the grantees? Can we tell them that their grants, that, that to hold off on asking for their funds? And but it but it's basically what you're saying, you know. Yeah, and what, what, I, what we discussed, Eric and I discussed, was not taking it away. We're just we can replenish it with next year's yeah, budget. Right. And what I, what I said was, there's no need to do that. We have we have more than enough cash. I mean, if we wanted to give six hundred thousand dollars to the to the employees fund instead of seventy thousand, then we would have had to have that kind of discussion at the time, or maybe four hundred thousand. The point is, is that we didn't. We weren't, we didn't scrounge around. We didn't make the program contingent on getting private funds. We asked for private funds. We, we were being asked whether or not businesses were contributing. We, were, we weren't just being asked casually. We were being asked by a small number of people in a way that suggested that they had a point of view about. And, and anyway, my point is that we weren't scrounging around. We, we, went ahead and committed i'm not a, i'm not saying anyway i'm not opposed to this fund i'm just saying that i think that the way we did it i don't think we have a history of having a problem we might have a problem in the future it may be in the future but we had unencumbered we won't have unencumbered something happens well, later on but we have a we have something set aside and prepared to address that issue is what i'm proposing yeah okay uh, marion so um you know, I'm not sure where I stand on this, but I think the the two sides that I'm trying to balance are, you know, 
on the one hand, I, I hear like it makes sense that there are going to continue to be unexpected events and how we deal with them, you know, it makes sense to prepare for them. On the other hand, I don't love in principle the idea of holding on to the money that we get as public servants with a mission to spend it and just sort of saving it for later when we could be using it now. Um, you know, I mean, the idea that like, it's sort of like, are, are we balancing the need now versus the need then and deciding that that need then is higher priority than what we're spending it on now? And I don't, I'm not sure, but I think it's, it's something to think about, you know, and especially in the situation where the money that we're granting, as John was saying, a lot of the money we've granted is over long timelines. So we often have, we sort of are in this position where we can almost borrow against our future in terms of like having the cash available. I, I don't know, I, I, but I do think I think, it's worth set, I, think like, set, I think we've set yeah. money aside now for future projects. Yeah. Why not this one? Yeah. Yeah, I think for me, the question is more, it, do, I mean, what we really have to ask ourselves is, is, do we feel like it's more important to say, fund childcare or to fund um, lost wages in the time of a flood? Why can't we do and, both? And maybe we can we, do both, but we're, I mean, that's what we're really asking right, right. Is, is where right. is the money going? My thought, can we put the difference and, and think of something like a, a mechanism for open enrollment in point of crisis? It, like rather than like having the funds set aside, but like have a well ironed out mechanism yeah. for where we can come up with a decision making process yes. or already yes. have that decision tree lined out, so that way we can quickly access funds yes. at what, a point of crisis. What, that way we're not setting right fund. Right, we, we can actually, and I, I think I think we can do that, and I think it achieves both objectives at the same time. Cool. Um, which is what we did, by the way, the last time, but we can and therefore didn't run into a problem in either in either of the past two crises for exactly that reason. Here's what I think we could do. I think that, again, when we talk about having money available, there's two kinds of availability, unencumbered and there's cash. Cash is always greater than unencumbered. So what we could do is do regular forecasts of how much cash we will have available, how much cash we will have available over the next six months. In other words, at the time of the loss of the time of the flood, we had hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars available. There was we were not constrained in how much money we gave to that program by how much we were encumbered. We had nothing encumbered, but we had lots of cash and there was no chance that we were going to use up that cash in the next six months. So we could basically say we can we can send seventy thousand dollars out the door. Ultimately, we didn't have to. We only had to send forty-five or forty. But but we we weren't constrained in our decision making. We could do that as a formal regular process. And any time we we hit a limit, let's say fifty thousand, let's say we were or a hundred thousand, whatever. We basically said, okay, our forecast is now that in the next six months we may go below $100,000 or we may go below $50,000. And at that point in time, it's still in advance of an unknown crisis, but crises will happen. They always do. We could then say at this point in time, we're going to stop encumbering more funds. Right, and so, that, that, so sorry folks, the grant that you guys have for the empty storefront is gonna have to be put on hold because if we gave you that grant, we would then have the risk that we would be constrained mm. if a crisis occurs in the next six months. By the way, every every three months we get new funding in, you know, and so so and our forecast may change because people may respond slower than we predict. So that's a process by which we can we can always have 
well, be reasonably confident, be quite confident, I think, that we will have a certain amount of cash in the bank to respond to an emergency, but not feel, you know, it will only constrain us in other activities rarely, I guess. Marion? I, I, I want to make sure I'm understanding because yeah. that was kind of complex for, okay. my, for me. Um, yeah. So, so are you saying um, that with that model, there's a chance that we might have promised someone, say, a grant for a rent reduction or something like that, and then we have to push it back beyond the date that we promised to give it? Only if our forecast, well, we don't promise a date to give it. But say, yeah. Only if our forecast is wrong, which it could be. <laughs> but basically, we have a pattern, and we can, we can go and ask, I mean, you know, so, so only our forecast is wrong. Is John, wrong? I always thought that, you know, it, as a result of our annual meeting. Sorry, my, <laughs> that, uh, no, it's my power. So I, I'll let you burn up for two. <laughs> That's electricity, so you can have some of it. <laughs> my understanding was that, you know, the annual uh, uh, meeting that we have in January, the goal is to spend all the money we have. Right. Well, to, to encumber the money that we okay. have. Okay. Encumbers. Well, no, not in January. No, 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 not in January. In January is the community grant process. That's we yeah. said this year is seventy thousand. Oh, that's right. That's right. right. So we would that's have. Right. We but, would. But in the past, what what we tried to achieve is, you know, use all money that we have for specific projects. So in, in, in each year, yeah. Yeah. Right. So. It's unclear to me, you know, you know I'm, um, I can get a little thick headed at times. No, you know, it's I, unclear I, to me I, how, how the mechanism would work. I don't like, I don't, I, you had me until the last bit of that, yeah. because the thing is like to a small business owner, we can't tell them, sorry, you can't do that thing now. It's right, that we promise. Months. Yeah. Small yeah. business is way too seasonal. That's right. like their window for when they have to do that exterior reno. They can't do it during Christmas holiday season, because that's when they're like kicking it. Yeah. This might be a case of simpler is. So so I think then the only thing that we can properly do if that thing does get triggered where we run out of funding, yeah. would be to have a more conservative approach to our modeling in the coming year and we just have to adjust. Because we can't tell people that they can't have their funding right. or they have to access it. it or it, we it, just go to Joe's original idea and just put aside is, 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 it, is, which is it important to stay focused on <laughs> Yeah. The facts that we're providing childcare so people can work, we're providing housing so people can work. Does it make sense that we also provide some sort of mechanism, mechanism that they can stay on the job if well, something bad happens? That's all I'm asking. No, no, it's not. Just, it is. Well, sorry. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm okay. All you want. I'm okay. I'm okay with it. I, I'm okay. We we had a program to encourage people to stay on the job. And we didn't have an emergency fund. So we don't need an emergency fund to compensate people to stay on the job. The, uh, the honorable and desirable spending that got us accolades and that we all supported is, does not require an emergency fund to do. We know that because we did it and we didn't have an emergency fund. So it's, this is not about at all whether or not the emergent the thing we spend it on is 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 needed. If it's an emergency and we decide it's an emergency, it's needed. My point, the the question is, we've had two emergencies. We've never needed an emergency fund. That that doesn't mean we shouldn't have one for the future, because there will be another emergency. But, but the I reason why we're struggling that. with this is that it's not obvious that we need one. We might need one. But we all agree. So that's that's what we're struggling with. It, it, well, all right. No, it did not. The, the, well, sorry. The, the money came from encumbered funds that have not been used. No, we're not saying that. In the same way, we're not 
Sorry, I just. I, I thought we were saying. That. We're not <laughs> saying that we have a. We are making a commitment to support store owners with their with their employees. We're not making a future commitment. We could. That's not what's on the table. The emergency fund is for anything. It's not just oh, unless you think it should just be for employees. This that's what I'm discussing. This what I, oh, I mean, that's what I opened my opening statement. Said. I, I thought it was an emergency an emergency fund. It could be for any emergency. For, it could be for any emergency. For example, the COVID fund. No, no, I'm talking about, like I said, I'll repeat myself so they can stay on the job. Okay, so setting, setting aside yeah. funds to making a grant to the employee wages, to the employee lost wages right. fund. So, it's a, okay, so the see. employers don't lose their folks I see. when the crisis is over and they go, oh, now I can't help it. Because I don't have anybody to work here. Okay. So that's, De that's my point. Got it. Okay, Deborah. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm, again, you knew I was late, but sorry to everybody coming in late. Um, emergency fund doesn't necessarily correlate with it being about employees. It very well may be, but we don't know what the emergency is. De Deborah, when we have on the, we, you and I were on that subcommittee. Didn't we name specifically name yeah. what we were doing? What did we name it? Emergency fund for employees. That was for this specific emergency. And that's what I'm saying. Right. So I'm saying if we're having an emergency, if we're trying to create an emergency fund or put money aside for an emergency. For employees. No, I'm not. But that's not what I'm saying. Right. Well, but Joe, so let's just stay with Joe's proposal for the moment. I understand. I think we might not be ready. Your point. So I think there's. Because what I'm trying to say is, is that we don't know what the emergency is. Of course we don't. Right. And it, therefore, it no, 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 it's, solution it, is. But it's only wages. Right. All I'm saying is to, to protect a commercial saying, district but, from yeah. being in a situation where after an event, an an event, event happens, event. instead of having 10 people on board as, as a staff, they've only now got four because during that time, people had to get yeah. jobs out of necessity someplace else. Amen. I'm with you. That's I was right. literally That's all I'm saying. Right. My 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 uh apologies for mislabeling this proposal. This proposal is not a proposal to establish an emergency fund for emergencies to be used to benefit the community in some fashion. No. Perhaps to em repay employee wages, perhaps to set up a pop-up emergency health care facility, perhaps to uh rebuild a building that was destroyed, perhaps to uh, hire additional town employees, any of those things that could happen. Can we happen. think of it as an insurance policy that right. ensures that there's some safety net out there for employees right. so okay. they won't okay. disappear? Sorry. I didn't, I don't know. I, mis I mis-explained it. I, this, this is not what I, what I uh, described. Yep. So why don't we do this? Let's just quickly go around uh, and, and, um, and see what, what people's pulse is to establish uh, 20,000. I, I don't think we make the decision tonight because we have to get the details yeah. of it if we were to do it. Right. But what's people's pulse yeah. as if we're ready now to uh, to allocate $20,000 this year or each year if that's what, to, an, that's to an employee lost wages emergency, future you know, emergency fund. Yeah. I'll just go across here. So you you, ask a question about that. Yeah. And then it will grow. So if yes. there's not an emergency this year, it correct. Grows. It'll yeah. stay in. Exactly. Correct. It's like exactly. a, it's making a grant. Okay. The and it grows and grows grant. until there's an emergency, and it might be eighty. And we well, were maybe 80, we so. limit it. Uh, Joe okay. suggested we might limit it to uh, to some amount. To okay. some amount. But this is similar to saying we are, want to spend a hundred thousand dollars on childcare or a hundred thousand. Understood. Understood. Just a kind of an informal sense of the group, so we can decide whether to develop the detail proposal quickly Understood. or not. Understood. Deborah, are you in? Favor, unsure, or I am totally in favor of this, and I'd like to put a caveat. Can we just do a? Uh, yes. Sorry, go ahead. I, no, 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 it's I, fine. I'm, I'm being all right. So in favor, but I'd like to. Put I'm non-binding in favor. Yes. Okay. Probably I think it's a great. <laughs> I'm opposed. Or about the how the mechanism would work, how we would define emergency. That's the, we haven't even touched on that of like. Look, what's the political blowback when someone comes to us with an emergency and we say that's not an emergency? We're not going to come to your thing. Good point. Well, it's not a thing. It's lost wages. Or you, we 
can't fund your loss with uh, that a business burns down. Are we paying the? No, that's that. This funds cannot be used for. It would not be used for that, right? No, no, no. Uh, just for lost wages. wages. Oh yeah, sorry. To pay the wages of the building for itself. Well, it was our. Let me just go. Yeah, you know, I don't know. So you're uns you're I'm unsure, Larry. Uh, well, I'm unclear whether the goal that we set up when we we gave out this money was actually achieved. I know it was, the money was well received. Did we did we uh, stop people from uh, leaving Woodstock and or Woodstock employment? I don't I don't know that. So I guess I'm a little confused. Oh, so gonna, I'm, I'm just to, for the purposes of this go around, I'm going to count you as unsure. That's that, that, that was my next point. Yeah, OK, as opposed to negative or positive. All right, Greta, I just want to get a sense of it because we Greta. I'm also unsure. All right. So, so it's so three. No one opposed. One person opposed. Three unsure. Three in favor. So my suggestion is is that the three who are in favor uh, get together and put together this specific proposal. Address the couple of questions that were asked. Is there a limit? Um, well, I don't. Have to. How do we define emergency? How do we define an emergency and so forth? And let's mechanism work. That, that's the kind of thing. If we were to set up a okay. program, a okay. lost wages emergency fund. Let's. Define it and okay. and come back with a proposal. This is a made. This would be a major grant proposal. It wouldn't be part of the community. This, this is what I get for a conditionally in favor of my. Of my <laughs> you should have one of the folks. Sure. And I'm going to one of the folks who are unsure be part of. Do one of the three unsures participate? What do you say, Greta? Jump on board. Greta has her. Well, I'm sorry, she's got her hands full on the mark. No, she's. Uh, Wait, you want me to be involved with writing the proposal? She, 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 want to, she, to be fair, I'm sorry. Yeah, no. I, um, I, I, I think I'll pass it on to someone else. I'm, I'm, She's got uh, I'm, I'm in the marketing needs right now. Larry, so Larry or Michael, do you want to at least? How about if would you agree to have it run by you so that you can ask questions? How's that? Yeah. Like, Why don't you send it to Larry and Michael? Okay. I'd be more than happy to. Yes, I'll. I'll yeah. I would be more than happy with that too. Just sort of do all of that offline, and then you know, sort of tweak it. See if you can address the questions. Your job is to ask questions. Your job is to come up with answers. Ooh, yeah. How's that? Is that a reason? Yeah, I'm okay. Okay. The only, the only, the only thing is, you know, this book they put out, uh, computers for dummies. Well, I have a signature copy. Mm -hmm. And I will not. I'm not going to be your secretary. <laughs> I'm secretary. I'm not going to secretary. Secretary. Somebody can organize a Zoom thing. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Yeah. Well, but I will. <laughs> ah. So. But. Well, I'll figure it out. Okay. Happy to figure do it. that. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, do it the <laughs> All right. I see where you're going. Larry, can you you can now hear because you're laughing, not randomly. I assume. Because you said you said you couldn't hear. Oh, that was a long time ago. Okay, got it. Sorry, Roger. Um. Oh, oh, I know Beth. Sorry, Roger was first. So I, or maybe you were first, but Roger and then Beth. First. Love you, Joe. You just can't hear what anybody in the audience is saying. Oh, in the audience. Okay, son. Roger, can you just take the little mic? Sure. No, 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 no. Um, my opinion is you're painting yourself into a corner. This level of specificity, I absolutely support the work you've done in the past to have an emergency response. Um, it's been tremendously helpful to the town. But if you say it's only this, you can't predict that it's going to be that. And then you've got this tranche of money essentially sitting around. Now, you could theoretically re-legislate it, but I would leave it as, as open ended as possible to to Mike's point that you also need to you need to be very clear on defining how you're going to declare something be an emergency but to have a lost wages fund as the emergency fund is tying your hands when you might need something else well, my I going can't to believe hello uh, I think Michael's going to Make that point, and I mean, you're going to. Yeah. So that's yes, that's question. the caveat, and I was just about. Towards it being open ended, because I don't, I don't personally want to create something that's just lost wages. So that's my caveat with it. 
All right. Well, okay. Well, we're still so, we're still we're then still in that. If you well, okay. The proposal you're opposed to the proposal. No, I, I'm. The proposal is to to limit it to lost wages. That doesn't mean in the future we can't relax that. I didn't That's hear. Th I didn't hear that it was limited. Joe, would you clarify that for Dr. That's what my point was. My point was to ensure that a business owner will have yeah, their I employees yes, there I when they want to open up again. You know, I, was, I don't think they are uh, separate. I okay, think you I, can ensure and have, have it. Right. Open. So, so you have the right to drop out if if it turns out that you, so. Yeah, I, 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 so I'm a committee of one, and I vote for. <laughs> I think it would be helpful to have another opinion. Really. I think it would be helpful to have another opinion in there. Okay. Look, I, my basic point is that we, this is not a group gathered in a public meeting right. to create a proposal. I guess maybe the best way to put it is, Joe, if you want to do something, come forward with with a specific proposal that's sufficient for us to to, to grant. You so know, it's down to a committee. <laughs> No, Marina is interested. Deborah is interested with the cabinet. I mean, you're yeah. looking for yes. people to point. Happy to meet. Well, we're looking for this is a we're looking for some. If we're going to put twenty thousand dollars a year towards something, we're looking for proposals That's that is robust good. as the other proposals we've gotten for similar amounts of money. Right. And so I'm just. Yeah. yeah I mean, I don't. Have, what I tried to express in this meeting is that I don't have a strong opinion about it. Okay. So like I, I'm, I'm unsure. All right. Well, then, Joe, I think it, well, why don't you seek input from anyone on the EDC, come forward sure. with a proposal that is as robust in mm -hmm. terms of its specificity and clarity yeah. as other proposals for this amount of money. Okay, send me an email or text or whatever about your ideas about how it should be formulated and uh, we'll work all, it out. All of us. Yeah, all, all of us. Anybody. Okay. All right. Jeff, you had, you had your hand raised on a point of order when we finished this discussion. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just curious because there's the I'm I'm just looking at the the people that are online and there's just an iPhone. I it, it would be just nice to know and it's my fault because I'm not at the meeting. I could be there. Um so there's an iPhone person here that we don't know. And obviously there's people in the audience that I'm just Okay. Um, why don't we do this? That's a good point, Beth. I, we haven't. We don't usually take the time. Could the person who's the iPhone unmute themselves and just say who they are, so we can record it? And then, Roger, can you just pass? Uh, 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 I don't know everyone in the audience. The people I know are, are Roger, Susie, and Jeffrey. And the two of you are. You'll. It's, they will. Yes, you're from Echo. I am. I'm Will Hurd. Nathan Howell. Hi, Nathan. I'm Victoria Hurd. Okay. <laughs> And then everyone, so the so Will and Victoria, and I think everyone else is identified. Stuart is Stuart Matthews. I, Stuart, is that right? Okay. Yeah. The sorry, iPhone. Had... The iPhone was Will. Will. Oh, sorry, Nathan. Nathan, could you say your name again? Nathan Howell. Howell. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Beth. I think that's a good addition. I'm sorry for not doing that. I tend to. I think we have Taylor Swift downstairs. Yeah, we have Taylor Swift downstairs. Okay. Sunset clause language. Another one? Uh, yeah, that was Larry saying he couldn't hear. So why don't we leave it as, you know, just send me a text or an, uh, an email about your ideas and I'll try to formulate something and bring it next me. Thanks, Joe. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Wow. Well, the, the and I'm sorry, Joe, for I, misunderstanding the, the specificity of it. So here is the language. Um, but just take a moment to look at it if you haven't seen it. This is proposed to be included in all of our grants going forward. So starting in January. So just take a quick look. Boy, it sounds like you're having a party downstairs. There has, there has been a suggestion by Ray Bourgeois that we modify this to say that only one extension would be granted. We don't, it's just a suggestion. So are there any, 
are there any comments? This is pretty, Larry and Todd drafted this. It's pretty clear what it is. Does anyone have any concerns about this? And before we discuss the suggestion, any concerns? Okay, good. Um, any comments about the suggestion? Michael, you would think it's not a good idea because, is that right? Yeah. You know, if they need, uh, hey, it's going to come this month. Oh, never mind. It comes through later. There's stuff. Obviously, if they have something running into an extension that it's beyond their cost controls. No, no, they would get an extension. It's just a question of getting. Right. So if they can't control it in the first window in which it was supposed to deliver, be delivered or be spent, maybe they can't control it. I would much rather us say uh, we have the ability to work with our grantees rather than say only one. We, we, we make a decision we as to it. when it's something is unreasonable. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments about this? No, John, these good people are only have for one item. Think yeah. We could probably uh, jump yeah. to that. Uh, yeah, we can we can skip over the next one. Sorry, I know. Yeah. Yeah, this is just one issue. All right. I just have one one question about it. There are a couple of things that are uh, are granted that are going to take longer than a year. So there just needs to be language in there for grants that are longer than a year. I think it is in there. That's what the first. That's what that first phrase is all about. Any balance that is provided by the terms of this grant. So if it's if they know that maybe it's not. Unless otherwise provided. Yeah. In other words, the, the okay. idea is that. Okay, that's the. The okay. default. In other words, the default is one year, but at the time of the grant, we can change that. Okay, that's the. So it just okay. sort of puts a stake in the ground, without okay. it, it being bad. Any other questions or concerns? Is any anyone in favor of the limiting it to one extension? Okay, so then, so then. Uh, Let's uh, let's have Larry. Can you make a motion to adopt this? I am moved to adopt the proposed sunset clause language uh, as part of our standard uh, grant process. Okay. Second. Second by Michael. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any aye. opposed? No. Are you voting? You, you oh, said aye. aye. Okay. Aye. Sorry. All right. Sorry. Very good. Okay, yes. So let's we'll, we'll come back to scheduling the community grant process. Um, let's just go to five to the empty storefront incentive application. Um, so we, the um, oops, sorry, I'll just go back for a second, just to the agenda. So the well, here I'll just go to the application. Let's put it up on the screen. I gave you the application. Yeah, no, I have it here. It's it's in the back. There it is. Yep. All right. So just a quick introduction. We have funds remaining in the empty storefront program. There are um, criteria for the program that I think you got a copy of that I think and hope you meet, but I just want to make sure that this is the case. And I apologize. I only got, I only, Refresh my memory on these criteria yesterday. I gave I gave them a copy of the criteria, right. and we spoke about it, and they clearly met you know, all the steps. So the, it has been vacant for six months. It's if, sorry. The, the criteria for everyone's benefit are: there's a location, which you fit into. There's the storefront has to be ha, have been empty for six months. If the furniture from T Shoppers counts, then no. No, it's it, it's it has to be actively occupied. Okay. The third is that at least the, the third is that it can't exceed two dollars and fifty cents per foot, which yours does not. I'm just repeating that you qualify for that. Fourth, the question I had a, a question about is seventy percent of the space that is being incentivized needs to be focused on retail, and I didn't know whether your downstairs area is equal to the upstairs area. And if so, what percentage of your space being rented is focused on retail? Absolutely. And retail, are you defining that as open to the public? Because yeah. our whole space is, is dedicated to our retail operation. No, no, no. The, the intention upstairs, yes, the upstairs is about 1300 square feet. And that is it's 1300 and then a little bit less on the downstairs. And that is fully de dedicated to our retail. The upstairs is. Yes, sir. Actually, it's interesting. The language doesn't say 
It doesn't say open to the public. It says retail. So I think in the absence of clarity, we're going to assume that, as you say, it's all supporting retail. Yeah, and also, right. Okay. Um, a lot of it the only there's... the only um, request that I have then is that the executed lease be attached. Oh, sure. So if you would just send that to us. Absolutely. Okay. Are there any discussion or questions about this? In the past, sorry. In the past, this was handled. We delegated this to the administrator of the EDC. The only reason we've never discussed it before is we delegated it to Sally and Sally uh -huh. had these discussions. Rather than recreate the position of administrator, I thought we'd just put it in front of the EDC since it's not very frequent. Anyone have any questions or concerns? Okay, hearing none, do we have a motion to approve this? Motion to approve. Second. Okay, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. So Perfect. just send us the lease. You can send it to me. Fine. You got it. And where can I find your email? Uh, pretty much everywhere. <laughs> That's fine. If you just want to send this up to Joe, that. Victoria, you can just give it to me. I'll give it to him. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Yeah, thanks for coming. So grateful. The community has been nothing but incredibly supportive, kind, and loving. So thank you to you all. Yeah. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> and the grandparents are loving all of our organic baby clothes. So yeah, congratulations. Yeah. All right. Very good. Thanks, Joe, for yeah. saying. I'm sorry that I. Yeah. Okay. Um. Just. Briefly, uh, to go back to our last old business item, scheduling the community grant process. So we agreed on. As publicly, I will do so by the end of this weekend. There's some system in, in, enhancements. I'm trying to get the application is identical to last year. The announcement will be essentially identical to last year. The only difference will be the comments about the business loan fund, which is why that's on the agenda. But absent that, everything is identical. The system changes we're making is bringing it into the grant manager portal so that it's not a separate app on the website. It's all part of grant manager. So from this point forward, we track grants from the application all the way through to closing the grant and no longer. And it's going to help us in the long run reduce costs. Technically, it, there's some little glitches. And so I'm, if I can't solve them, I, I will use, we'll have it announced by the end of this weekend. So that's at the beginning of November. If the applications are due on November, on January 16th or the Friday of that week, that gives people two and a half months and it gives them time after the holidays to quickly get it in, um, which is why we decided to do it last year. So, and you all agreed, on, you all agreed on that. Yeah. What I'd like to discuss just briefly is the scheduling of time to answer questions prior to our decision meeting. When is the decision meeting? And, and the second thing is to decide when the annual meeting is, which is the decision meeting. So um, I can, in terms of the annual meeting, that's easy. It would be in the second half of January, right? Because the deadline is the 15th or the 16th. So um, if you want, I can just send around a poll to to establish it. It's usually been on a Saturday because it takes three quarters of a day, depending on the number of applications. Are people still comfortable with a Saturday in the second half of January? Any objections to that? Oh, actually, maybe we just, I guess it's not, there's probably only two Saturdays, right? So should we just pick? No. Yeah, have it here. Uh, have their calendars out? I do. We're talking 20th, yeah. 27th, or 30th? Yeah. 20, 20. 20th, or 27th. 20th, or 27th, yeah. It, it comes in. Um, oh, right, right. Any 20th, or 27th, from the 27th, 27th gives us a little bit more time. I sure. think maybe give us an extra week to. Yeah. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone have a problem with the 27th? Cramming for the 20th. Yeah, let's do the 27th. Okay. So the annual meeting on Saturday, January 27th, we usually start at 9 or 9.30. Um, you know, unless... Sorry? 
We did pizza again. Uh, we didn't do it last year. We had we coffee got, and. Oh, we got those sandwiches. Those, from those sandwiches. Maple we cannot do that, again. Like that. that was bad. I oh, love it. It's those sandwiches. All right. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> very sensitive. We made, made it. Can only have it here for three sandwiches. But I don't okay. Know. All right, we'll have the sandwich discussion sometime between now and then. Um, we, <laughs> Michael brought up the point at the last meeting that that a, a short when we all agreed that a shortcoming of the process is to make sure that we give we want to give grant applicants more opportunity to get informal feedback and to answer questions and so forth rather than at the decision meeting, which can be, you know, the, the 20, there's a very limited time if we get a lot of applications. Mm -hmm. One thought that I had was to use a good portion of the December and January regular monthly meetings as kind of open sessions. And maybe we keep as much as we can off of the agendas for those two meetings and tell people, okay, it's November 4th, we're opening it up. On December 2nd and January 3rd, we've got an hour and a half of our two hours that to. That's a great idea. Just this was, is that, that, that means we don't, yeah. Any folks online, any, that means we don't have to reschedule, you know, are you, are, are you all comfortable with that? Okay. All right. So that's the schedule then. And we will do our best to keep other items off of the agenda for those two. Okay. Moving on. Rental incentive application. Trina, uh, we have another unit coming online, hopefully. Good. Yes, we do. And I will get the item. Hold on. Would you like me to share my screen? Uh, yeah, that would be better. Hold on. Let me stop mine. So I stop mine. Hold on. Just give me a second. Yeah, sure. Why is it? Where's my stop sharing? Oh, stop sharing. That big red button. Okay, and hold on, Trina, I gotta give you permission. All right. Okay, go ahead. Okay. You may have to change the splitting again. Oh, yeah. It's not how big it is. It's okay. Okay. Um, does everyone see the screen? Yeah. Perfect. Okay, hello. I'm uh, Trina Tolliver, the housing advisor for the EDC uh, Housing Working Group. And we have a new application for the rental incentive um, workforce rental program. <clears throat> uh, the applications from Todd Cordicamp and Beth Hunt. Um, the they are applying for a two-year term to house two qualified tenants and two children, um, based off our table for the grants. That would be an incentive of eight thousand four hundred. Um, the location of the property is 675 College Hill. It's a three bedroom and one and a half bath home. Uh, they meet all of the eligibility requirements and a site inspection has been completed by myself and Jill. Uh, uh, property is on a well um, and septic and David Green has already been over there for a pre-inspection. Okay. Thank you. Oh, yeah. um, let's see here. They are submitting the state and fire uh, safety permit paperwork now, um, and they have a family of four, the, the ones that I mentioned, that will become the official tenants for that home. Um, both of the adults work in Woodstock, and they plan to charge a rent of $1,500 for a three-bedroom, and the tenants pay the utilities, so very reasonable and attainable rate, um, and even less than what we require for a three-bedroom. Here's a photo of the home. Um, <clears throat> any, 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 any questions any comments? or comments from the EDC? Right Sounds great. Thank yeah. You. Yeah. Thanks, Trina. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, can we, well, let's just uh, take an official vote. Someone just make a motion to approve this. Joe? Second by Michael. Any discussion? All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Mm. Any opposed? Okay. Trina, thank you. Also, I mm. want to report back, Trina, and to the EDC that um, 
our request to the select board mm -hmm. to recombine the two ADU incentive programs that we have into one bucket of funds has been approved. If you remember, there's a, we have a multi-unit program and a single unit program. The criteria are, are slightly different because the legal uh, requirements are slightly different. We made, I made the mistake of suggesting we have two separate pots of money when in fact, there's no reason to have two separate pots. We're just using it to create ADU. So Trina will continue to manage the two according to their different legal requirements, but financially, the, the select board is obviously fine as we were with one pot. So Trina, you now have right. the official ability to do that. Yeah, great. Okay. Thank you. I'll um, update the reporting that I've showed you in the past to right. be just the one bucket now, and yeah. we'll go from there, and we'll use that for ongoing years as well. Great. Okay. Thank great you. Great going. Wonderful. Great. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Thanks, Trina. Thank you. Okay. The last, let's just quickly get the, the update on the EDC business loan fund. Larry and I were supposed to put that, oh, and Joe, sorry, the three of us were supposed to push that forward. We haven't yet. Uh, given what's on our plate, I don't think we will be in the next few months. So I, I just, I think this is just a heads up that. Well, I, yeah, I, 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 I think, you know, uh, for me personally, what came to light is, uh, the other options that are available if somebody needs a loan for their business. I mean, uh, um, that speaks to me. This, the idea isn't as critical as I initially thought. Was, I huh. guess what I'm saying. Well, I, I should, yeah, sorry. I should basically say uh, that, that this idea is not being taken off the table. And if anyone else wants to push it forward, you're welcome to. And I still think it's, I think that there are other alternatives. I think it's still worth exploring. I don't know whether that leads us to establish it or not, but I think it's worth exploring. I don't have the time. I don't think Larry has the time. I don't. So we're just sort of, and Joe does. And so I think we're sort of saying, we're just admitting that that's all and just leaving it on the agenda without any expectation of a shelf progress. Right. Sorry. It's shelf. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Setting it on the holding yeah. pattern. And this has, this, this has one small effect. Last year, if you remember the brilliantly crafted listserv announcement, I know you all keep track of my listserv announcements. When we announced the- This will be hanging on my wall. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Same copies are available at Gilliams, by the way. Um, we, we, we tried to clarify, I think, successfully clarified last year that applications from for-profit businesses were accepted, were allowed and encouraged, but that the EDC was going to look for a societal, a community benefit along with the business benefit. Yeah. That's simply saying, you know, give me, please give me money to expand my kitchen because if I expand my kitchen, my business will grow. That's admirable. And there are other sources for that, but the EDC would like to say, great, you, you can have the benefit, but can the kitchen be available for community use on Thursdays or something of that sort? The announcement then ended with a paragraph that said, businesses that are interested in purely business things could potentially apply to a business loan fund if we create one, it's under development. I'm going to leave that paragraph out, not because we won't do it, but because we haven't yet. And so that's sort of- John, has anybody ever approached or applied or thought about it or even made inquiries about it at all? It's hard, it's well, hard so to draw. Demand, what I'm getting to, it doesn't look like the, the demand is there. There may not be. I think to yeah. some extent, no, I mean, I has a person never said, well, could you loan, would you, Oh, would, would you, would you, that would you loan sure. us money or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, it's come up a few times. It's not, yeah. we did a long time ago, but it wasn't an ongoing program. It was a request for funding. And we said, would you accept a loan? Yes. Right. Yes. And we've done that one other time, I think. Yes, so we, we you know, it, this, the idea here was to, yeah, I, I don't want to read, again, we're putting this, I, anyway, I, I, it's really a communications point. I'm going to leave off that last 
sentence sort of enticing businesses to say this is coming soon because it's not coming soon. Sure. It doesn't mean it won't ever come. So unless anyone disagrees, I, I don't know what else to write. So okay. <laughs> um, all right. The last topic of discussion is our tourism strategy discussion is how I've talked about it. And there are four or five parts to this discussion. Let me tell you what the parts are and we can try to allocate our time. We'll definitely end on time. But, uh, what is on time? Do we have eight, a eight thirty is, is what we've been in two hours, and I think we've been sort of sticking to that, which is for me the first time in my <laughs> not totally sticking to it, but close. Okay, here are the parts: the community survey. There's there's not much. There's nothing. There's no no new conclusions, but I will just remind you of the conclusions very briefly. The the, the slides are all in here. I'll put them up on the screen in a second. The second, which is new, is results from the visitor survey. Uh, and I'll share that. Third is a discussion again, but I'd like to formalize it. And I think it's something that we would review with the select board, even though there's no definition of what we're supposed to review or not. We clearly have to review funding to them. This isn't a funding decision, it's a strategy point. But the, the discussion about how we word our, what has been a marketing objective and what I think should be a tourism, developing and growing a tourism economy objective. It leaves marketing as a central part of that, but it also includes the experience that visitors, residents, and merchants have in as part of tourism. So I'd like to talk about that language. Yeah, how we develop it? Oh, right. it, it part, it, well, that's part of the experience, absolutely. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, a, a very brief update from Greta and Marion on the marketing working group, um, but there's really yeah, very brief. And um, a, and finally, a discussion about a date and a and a approach to a public meeting this month, which I think we're now ready to, even though we haven't done the merchant survey yet, I think uh, Greta and Marion, I want to talk to you about this. I think we can launch the merchant survey next week at a, at a second, at the meeting of the merchants. We can at least print it out and give it to them. Um, but, but I think we're ready on the other two surveys to have a public meeting. We've now, this is, we will now have previewed the top line results of those, both of those surveys in the public EDC meeting. So I think we're ready to to have that public meeting in November. I just want to talk about anything about that. Sure. So, so we leave this meeting tonight with an agreement on the date and how we're going to go about that meeting. I think it's pretty straightforward. Okay, the community, let me just put up the slides. The community survey, there are no new conclusions. There is new information. We had 370 people respond and there are still eight people for, I don't know how many, Susie called the other day and said there's people who want to, mm -hmm. What's the link? And and I went to the town hall. There were four people who had filled it out uh, in, on paper. And you know, I mean, I have to key it in. I, it, so there's, it's not going to change <laughs> the conclusions, but but it's a fantastic response. And um, you know, it's it's. I think it's pretty pretty cool. Um, all right, this is. I have to share this. Give me a second. Um, let's see if it's going to show the whole thing. It may not. No, all right, let me hold on. Let me just make it a little wider. All right. Oh, I have a I injured my hand. I can't move my hand much. Okay, there we go. Sorry, hold on. Almost done. <laughs> Incredibly frustrating to watch. <laughs> okay. All right. You've seen these slides before. The numbers are slightly different, uh, but they but they're not dramatically different. Basically, the conclusions stay the same. Most people understand the benefits from tourism. 89 or 98 percent have some understanding that it helps local stores and restaurants thrive. About half the people, this is the least, think that to some extent tourism creates a more diverse local experience for residents. That's all the way over on the right. Half the people don't really think that um, you know, less than half people you know, don't think that it has has much benefit. But broadly speaking, here are five different benefits. You know, it encourages visitors to consider moving here, increases the number and quality of activities for residents, it increases property values, creates a more diverse environment. People understand that tourism it benefits Woodstock. And so as Susie's made this point earlier, no one is arguing that we shouldn't have tourism. And the community understands that. 
okay. At the same time, uh, to me, at least a surprisingly large number of people say that they regularly experience some of the negative effects of uh -huh. tourism. And so the bottom three, the bottom, going from the bottom, the way to read this is going from the bottom of the chart, the bottom category, the blue, is people who experience the problem, let's take the left-hand column, difficulty getting a reservation at a restaurant. They experience that problem daily. That means that someone, actually 15% or 45 people eating out 360 yeah. Right, and now they can't. Right. I think the, po the point is that it's very clear, and there are some other results that I think I highlighted in the memo, and I don't, don't have to, it has to do with bodily functions, which is also by two people observed daily. Uh, it's clear that emotion is affecting, to some extent, some number of applicants. Mm -hmm. We're not, this survey is not designed to answer the question, what percent of the people can't make a reservation how many days a year? It's designed to answer the following question for the EDC. Should we be thinking more purposefully and maybe dedicate resources to improving the experiences of the respondents? In this case, it's residents. In the next survey case, it's visitors. That's what we're trying to answer. Do the results tell us that we should think about this, work hard, maybe spend money, and do something? And the answer yes. to me in both cases is yes, we should. Yes, of course. Right. Yeah. Right. And so, correct. And we're, we're and we're, tonight we're not going to we're 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 not going to get into what the low hanging fruit is. What I'd like to see come out of this meeting is say, look, and and the, it, you know, let's start the brainstorming at the public meeting about what we might do. But let's just agree that the, the results say we should figure out, we, we need to tackle this. Now, whether we can or not, what the best ideas are, and so forth, that's to come, but let's commit to that effort. We're approaching it. Right? Yeah, exactly. And that's what, and the survey to me, both surveys are in, lead to that conclusion. The conclusion doesn't change. So we don't have to quibble about the yeah. definition. Well, I, the community, I, we're gonna, I think we will come to the meeting, but I think a main purpose of the meeting is to start, first is to share the information, but then is to start to receive ideas. And by the way, just so you know, I've already started, I mean, this isn't my doing, but people just send me emails. Yeah, you did, you're not the only one today. I, the, three people sent me emails. By the way, the three of you, two of whom are in the room today, all, all there's one idea, which it relates to buses, that all three of you sent in. So that's pretty clearly low hanging fruit, right? So we'll get, but we'll get to that next meeting. That's gonna be fun. But basically, if you yeah. look at, John, we can't hear the whoever is speaking. I yeah. I presume it's Susie, but I I cannot hear a word she's saying. Sorry, um, she's basically broadly supporting what we what I've just been saying. And you know what, if, if if Jeff, unless if you either move yeah. closer or or we'll throw you the puck. But can you just take the puck so if you guys have more coffee? Yeah, right here. All right, you'll you'll pop over. Sorry, Larry. Apologies for that. But maybe I'm the only one that can't hear it. I don't know. No, 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 no. Others have said the same thing. You'll be able to oh. hear now. It's just taken. All right. So basically, the bottom three, the blue is daily, the orange is weekly, the gray is monthly. If you say monthly is you're experiencing things, then about half, 60% of the people are experiencing reservation difficulty, parking difficulty, traffic jams, 40% are inappropriate behavior, long lines, and poor service or, or poor service from local stores. So it's a meaningful number. I, to be honest, we could stop at this point. There's one more chart which talks about whether they're bothered by these things. And the blue is bothered a lot. The orange is bothered somewhat. Um, by the way, I experience these things at some reasonable frequency. None of these things bother me. But I'm a minority because more than half the people are somewhat bothered or bothered a lot. Again, so those two charts sort of say they've answered the question. We should do something. Let's try to figure out what we can do. Um, and I, and by, again, this makes the other point. Even people who, who who rarely or only on peak days experience some of the problems are quite bothered, which again, I think points, you know, it, there's something about people's attitudes about how much bothered they should be. But 
Hmm. It's just sort of interesting human condition, I suppose. It doesn't really change our conclusion. So any questions, any other questions about the, by the way, this survey data, I will strip off the people's names. I'd say 30 or 35 percent, a third of the people put their email address because they wanted to get a summary. We'll use that to invite them to the meeting. We'll send them a copy of these documents. The rest of it, I, I don't think anything needs to be cleansed. Anyone who wants to take this and look at, particularly the open-ended comments, you're welcome to. And, and they need to be analyzed, and they will be a big contribution, I think, to the public meeting. There's 970 specific comments, meaning some people, you know, say, I feel this and I feel that and I think this and I think that. I, my system has split those up. So it's a big deal and I haven't analyzed all of them. So just FYI. Um, okay, so any questions about the community survey, which again, this is the second time you've seen this data. It's just new data, but same conclusions. All right, Jeff. When I see something that says uh, people having difficulty parking monthly, things like that, it it tends to make me believe that the timing of the survey has influenced that strongly. Because if they had received the survey in March or April, I don't think you'd have gotten the same number of people saying they had trouble parking mo monthly or even <laughs> even today. Yeah. So that part's a little skewed. So I just wanted to say that. I think that's right. And so just to, again, to put forward to the work that we need to do, to begin to describe the work that we need to do, this is, we should not go from this to let's implement idea seven. Mm -hmm. We need to go, what I would say is we need to go, for example, on parking. Uh, we need to say, okay, we need to really figure out, people are bothered by parking. We really need to figure out when the parking is a problem, what are the whole range of solutions? We need to analyze it. But what we need to do is have a group look at parking, right? And not assume that everyone can't get parking every day. All the time. Right. The same thing is going to be true about food. The same thing is going to be true about any of these problems. So it just tell it just, in my view, if we, we should come up with a short list of problems like parking, that, that scope, parking, food, maybe a couple of others. Uh, and get groups to kind of look at those, figure out the answers to the, the scope and, and, and nature of the problem and propose options for addressing it. You're, you're shaking your head. <laughs> well, I keep saying parking, parking. I, I quickly shares, I came here 35 years ago and it was in August and we moved in our house on a Wednesday. Thursday morning I got up, 35 years ago, I said, I'm gonna find out more about this town I live in. I walked downtown and I pick up a standard Headline was, 35 years ago, Woodstock has a parking problem. <laughs> 35 years ago. Right. And it's still there. Yeah. So I'm wondering, do we have a parking problem or do we have a problem with parking? But, so, so, ho, ho. Yeah, but it just, I can't help but think that yeah. that's kind of ironic. Yeah. And so the, 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 well, so we're not going to solve, we, we, that, that group may conclude we don't have a parking problem. I, for what it's worth, um, I've told a couple of people this on Saturday, September 29th at 2 p.m. So just at the, at the beginning of the peak season on a Saturday afternoon, beautiful weather. I went around and counted the empty parking spaces between the rec center and Worthy Kitchen. Wow. Which yeah, you had a great Saturday, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you... 2.15 p.m. You got too much free time, John. Yeah, yeah. All right. How many empty parking spaces are there? We're there. Right. Six. You can tell us. I told him, and he got the number wrong. Two hundred and eighty-eight empty spaces. Empty spaces. Right. Well, well we want to park three doors down. I understand people want to park on the sidewalk. Right. Yeah. Park illegally on both sides of Fox Street. The, um, that's a different by the way in the comments and and in the op, in the visitor survey the uh, th that's a different issue that's you could call that a parking issue but i would actually treat that as a separate issue that's a behavior is a traffic anyway the point is yes that's a different issue i'm not and i'm what i'm saying doesn't address it anyway this kind of analysis would be the start of what this group so maybe i mean so i don't think we need to build anyway i'm not trying to solve the problem i'm just giving you that information we need to figure out 
of the major things that are of concern, what 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 is the what, what really is the problem? This doesn't tell us precisely what the problem is. What really is the problem, if there is one? And then what can we do to fix it? So okay. Now let me just share with you the visitor survey because this is new information. Unfortunately, um, we have um, oh, 115 people. Now all of these people have been to Woodstock. This is a survey of people who have come to Woodstock. How'd you find them? Because we we came off of a list of people who gave the people who, who who gave their email address to the visitor center. I got that email. There's there were two emails. So there, yeah. was, there was the visitor Sorry. center email. Right. Was also. I don't want that in my house. Everybody have that. Right. I got. That didn't come from yeah, no, sorry. No, no, so. hold on. No, no. There is one survey which starts with Have you visited Woodstock? There were two invitations. One of the invitations was sent to the, the database of people that are in our marketing platform 30 plus thousand people. The same survey invitation, the different invitation, the same survey, pointing to the same survey, was sent by the, um, by the chamber's list of people who have given their email address at the Welcome Center. Um, we are going to analyze from which invitation list the responses came. Anec not anecdotally, it, it, it appears that they may have come largely or almost entirely from the Chambers list because the, right, the moment that, that the invitation was sent out by the chamber in the 24 hours that followed, we got 108 responses. And I don't know exactly when the other one was sent out, but I think it was two or three days earlier. Greta. Sorry, Gre oh, Greta, go ahead. The class four email went out on Wednesday morning and the visitor center email went out on Thursday afternoon. So there was, you know, maybe eight, uh, yeah, 24 to 36 hours difference. All right, so when, when, all right, so I'll do that analysis and I'll let you but know. But to so, be, and just to um, add to that, the the visitors center list are verified visitors, whereas the marketing initiative email list is a lot of, you know, people we're hoping are going to come that obviously haven't come. Well, or, or may have come. We don't know whether they've come or not. Well, right. Largely people who have not visited. Right. So, so we're going to, we're going to do that. We're, we're going to figure that out. But the point is, is that, that we got, it's a small sure. number, but they're highly qualified to tell us about their experiences. Because remember, the survey was, what was your experience? So, yeah. John, John, it's Tom Ayers. May I ask a quick question? Uh, in Please. terms of numbers, how many, how many um, visitors or former visitors uh, were on the chamber list versus how right. many went out through the, um, through right. the we, uh, marketing we, list? There's, I'm sure there's an overlap. Uh, and we're going to find out what that was. But so, we're going to find out. I don't don't write about that yet. We don't know. Sorry, yeah. you can whatever you want, yeah. but it, we we don't know. That, that's the analysis I'm suggesting we do. That may give us some insight into the nature of the two lists. Right. But right, right now, what we do know for sure is that the 115 people have visited Woodstock because they answered the question yes. Actually, three people who responded said no, and then that the survey ends. So it was roughly the the visitor center list was roughly 5,000 people. Correct, Beth. Just under, yeah. thank you. Just under five thousand. We do need to cross reference. I mean, it's possible that all five thousand of those are on both lists. I mean, hopefully they would be shared. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that's a different issue. So you would think so, yeah. Um, okay, so th this, so the we asked them a series of what we basically said. How satisfied were you over? We asked them two basic questions. How satisfied were you? Uh, very. Satisfied, neither satisfied nor dissatisfied, dissatisfied, very dissatisfied. Oh. And we also asked them, how likely are you to recommend uh, visiting Woodstock? Uh, very likely, somewhat likely, neither likely nor unlikely, such, somewhat unlikely. Such an important question. Right. It really is. And the responses give us the same conclusion. Um, we then asked them how satisfied or dissatisfied they were with five aspects of their visit. If you remember, dining, lodging, shopping, outdoor activities, cultural activity. And so we have those results. We also ask them, and this is important subtlety, tell us about the, the answers to all of these questions pertain to your 
most recent visit. So just tell us about the most recent visit. When was that? So we did not, when we talk about changes over time, we didn't ask Marion, you visited here in 20, 2023, you know, you also visited in 2017. Actually, we did ask whether or not it was better or worse. So we have a little bit of trending, but we don't have people in 2017 saying, this is how satisfied I was because I came in 2017 and I remember it because it was last week. And then the same thing in 2023, that's normally how you would do this, but we can't go back in time, right? We didn't think of doing this survey in 2017. So we did the best we could and, and, and saying it, you know, we took the people who said their last visit was before 2023, and we compared them to the people who said that their last visit was this year. And that's what the results you're seeing. So it, it's, a, it's not a, as good a, a way of doing it, but we had no choice. So we wanted to get a sense of the trends. So the blue is either very satisfied, the blue is very satisfied, and the orange-ish is satisfied. So 86% of the 115 people were satisfied. I think about a third of them were before 2023 and two thirds of them were this year. 97% were satisfied in prior years, 81% this year. You could say that the 97%, you know, again, maybe you people, you know, oh, I had such a great time. I've forgotten what went wrong, whatever, whatever it is, it's, 81% satisfaction this year. That's not bad. It could be better. It's a little worrisome that it's gone down, or it seems like it's gone down. Um, I'm just going to keep going so we can talk about these. Same thing on, on likely to recommend. The blue is the very likely to recommend. Uh, orange is somewhat likely to recommend. So 70 to 90% of the people, depending on what you mm -hmm. say, will say that they recommend well, they'll recommend it to a friend. So the conclusion that people, that most people are leaving Woodstock and telling people not to come is not correct. Most people are leaving Woodstock and telling people to come. Of the people, of the people we surveyed, correct. Quite. Uh, it's 100% of the people we surveyed. And, and it's 100% of the visitors we surveyed. I understand. Yeah. Right. Correct, but, but that's true of any... You can only you can only get around that with a census of every person who ever came here. People You mean the, the residents, right? But with this one, you know, how many people have come? Probably a million people. I think it's fair. Okay, the the conclusion that I think is reasonable to draw is that most visitors have a good experience, and most visitors are willing to recommend to their friends to come again. I don't, I, I think we could, you could, yeah, that, that's the, I mean, it's, uh, let's put it this way. Before we did the survey, we had some people saying that everyone had a bad experience and other people saying that everyone had a good experience. And now we talked to 115 people and this is what they said. We would have liked to have more. And by the way, we, we did discuss having an incentive uh, and decided not to spend money on that. And if we decide, remember again, the question that we're trying to answer. If we decide that we can't answer that question, we could, I think we would need to spend money and we could spend money, it wouldn't bankrupt us to kind of get more answers. But I, I would argue that we act on, on this and draw the conclusion I'm saying. But again, let's keep going. You all can disagree or you all, anyone can disagree with this. Roger. Um, do you have any um, access to say satisfaction data from say like the N or something like that? Because I'm sure they do some kind of survey. I don't know if they would share with you, but they might share gross numbers. Yeah. The, the, we don't, we have not yet accessed it. They do have data. Um, and I think it would be, it would be. And there may be others. I don't no, know. No, no, I think I or somebody. I think it would be that. very useful to reach out to them. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, we can imagine some sensitivity, but also some willingness to share. We'd have to explore that. Right. Right. I mean, yeah, they may want to say, no, we don't want to tell you. Yeah, no, no, I understand. They, they, Everybody hates us. Yeah. Okay. Um, the time of year, this is it. So we asked when, if, what, when was your last visit? Um, we, we asked a couple of, we asked, you know, was it during a peak season? Was it during a holiday weekend or was it not either of those two things? And it, it, this is the satisfaction on the left and the likely to recommend on the right. And it doesn't really change. It's kind of interesting. 
most people, more people were here. I don't remember what the split is, but more than half the people were here under peak holiday, but it doesn't really affect things. Um, whoa, whoa, sorry. The, um, yeah, sorry. The, um, <laughs> the open-ended comments here are really, I think were really important because it brings up, you know, nuances and other issues. So first thing we ask is what's the best thing about Woodstock? And 60% of the people said something about the feel of the place. You know, it's a small town. It's my place of joy. It makes me feel peaceful. And it's beautiful. 20% yeah. said the people. Um, 15, 16 said parking. 15 said, uh, sorry, shopping. <laughs> parking. They love parking. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, specific events, lodging and dining. A few, a couple of other random things. I think people, a couple of people said the Woodstock Pharmacy. We need to fix that because that was the thing that made was most it pleasing. Um, then we asked them, "What's the one thing you would change about Woodstock?" I love this. The leading thing was nothing. Or what? The leading answer was nothing. What would you change about this? Twenty-seven people wrote nothing. I don't. That's not blank. Twenty-seven people wrote nothing. Nothing. I would change nothing. Don't change anything about Woodstock. Yeah. Right. Um, Nothing. But 27 people, 25% of the people also said more, but it had to do with dining, with access to dining, more longer hours. Get up, um, feed them. Just get up, feed them. Right. And actually, if you look at shops and restaurants open more hours, that kind of maybe makes yeah. the heat and drink. It was mostly restaurants. Um, interestingly, so fewer crowds, less traffic. And, and of the 14 people who said that, at, I would say half of them understood it, it made a comment indicating they understood the irony of their response but i think it's it's something it, it goes jeff to your comment about buses and, and crowds and so forth that the people the crowds don't just affect the residents they also affect negatively some of the visitors yeah yeah now this is not i mean this is eight this is seven seven six and a half percent of the people so but it, it we only ask what's the most important thing um to the whole you know, there's a whole series of small things here. Um, wow. One person mentioned restrooms. That's what I just looked at. That's amazing. Yeah. That doesn't mean that other people, it might have been the second thing that they would have fixed. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. But it, it, it is kind of interesting to see. <laughs> Most people didn't stay. I have, we have, we have, I, I don't think it's in here, but a good mm -hmm. note. We may see it. I think we can infer it from some data in a minute. Um, anyway, yeah, again, that doesn't mean, doesn't yet mean anything, but this is sort of when we ask them about, no, I don't think we're going to have the data, Susie, but we do have it. A good number of, I think 50 plus, I think about half the people didn't stay overnight. Let's just see, hold on. Not stay overnight. Yeah, it's correct. Actually, I can tell you, tripper. 48. Yeah, okay, so this chart shows how many people did the thing left to right. So the further right is, so 90% of the people shopped and 23% of the people went to cultural events. Huh. So actually, Susan, we can see that 50, about half the people stayed overnight and half did. Yeah. Right. Um, and then you can see how satisfied they were. Now, remember this chart starts 75%. So people were pretty satisfied, but if you wanted to make a distinction, they were yeah. most satisfied with shopping and outdoor stuff. Uh, at least, you know, least satisfied with the dining. And again, we're not trying to pinpoint this to the decimal point. So I think that's basically it. So that's what, th that's what uh, the external survey shows. Uh, yeah, Roger. Um, yeah, I, I think the, the resident survey has a big enough response rate yeah. that you can, you can draw more than just kind of um, qualitative conclusions. Um, this, I don't think you can, you can draw qualitative conclusions from it, but, but it's, it's very iffy to draw any kind of quantitative conclusions from it. Um, and I think one thing that would help this discussion is somehow, and I don't know how one would do this besides having people stand around with clickers, is to come up with some kind of enumeration for the number of people who actually were here. Um, and I don't know if there's crowd analysis right. things that could be done, but there were a lot more. I mean, this is 
probably less than 1% of visitors. I think we have a good metric in terms of the trend because the Welcome Center counts the number of people that come into the Welcome Center every day, and they've been doing that for 15 years. Right. So that's a, that's a, good, that's a good trend line it'll give us one the, way or the other. It'll give us the percentage increase. Right. I think that's a pretty reliable uh, so, see, I would agree with that, but, but I think yeah. it's, it's hard to draw any kind of quantitative conclusions out of such a small number of respondents especially since we're not even clear which list all of those responses came from, it, it or at least at this point. It doesn't matter which, they, these are all people that visited, so it doesn't really matter which list. I, I think that you send out to a list of 30,000 people that you've essentially mined through contests. Well, that's a such, really different list than somebody who walked into the, the, first, the, the visit. The question on the survey is, have you ever visited Woodstock? The answer is no. You don't. You don't. They're not count. Yeah, but that's that's a self. That's a that's a, a volunteered. There's no way to check that. There's no way to check any responses to any survey. Um, so right. I mean, I'm not disagreeing with your point about numbers. It's just a survey. I mean, it, it, it's a survey. That's sorry. The conclusion that I that at least that I draw, and then let's let's and Greta, you, you can be next. The conclusion that I draw is um, that satisfaction could be. We could. We could. People are generally satisfied. They're actually pretty satisfied. It could be higher. And it's a little worrisome that it looks like it might be going down. That's the conclusion I draw. I, I think I and, have, and, and is there any way to identify what needs to be fixed? You know, there my, is actually. There, there is. Right, well, I mean, second, sorry, sorry. Michael, sorry, Greta sorry, first, then Michael. Yeah, Greta. Greta, then Susie, then Michael. Greta, go ahead. Um, so just to kind of um, respond to Roger and a few other comments that were made. Uh, so the this is a very small uh, amount of responses. Yes, that is correct. But um, they will be rolling in. Beth has a QR code linking the survey at the visitor center. Um, and we spoke with class four about um, attaching it onto their email that goes out to the people who have recently visited specifically versus just a big blast out to everyone who um, the majority of which have never come to Woodstock. So um, hopefully there'll be more information rolling in and um, and that that's all I want to say. All right, that's interesting. I didn't do that, Susie. So um, I think that, you know, you can look at Reddit. There's a lot of discussions on people's impressions on, on Reddit. There are ways you can fill it. It is a super small, small sample size. Agreed. Um, but there are ways you can fill it out with more qualitative stuff. Uh, Agreed. And actually, just to be clear, there there is a service which analyzes the comment. You can buy a service. It's expensive, but it's affordable basically analyze every comment about Woodstock, Vermont that's been made on 150 different travel sites around the world. Trending, uh, if, is it related to food and stuff? It's phenomenal what's, yeah, what's available. $60,000. No, 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 it's, no it's, it's not that, but, but it's... I heard it. Uh, well, I, I talked yeah. to somebody who did more those. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Okay, well, anyway, yeah. we, we could get more information if we, yeah. if we wanted to go down that path. Jeffrey, oh, sorry, Michael. Uh, I, I just want to say that from the point of view of someone who is facing these people in uh, more than hundreds of thousands over the busiest time of the year, and I hear their comments when we ask them, how are you doing? What do you think of things? So this is anecdotal. It's not a survey, official survey. However, the feedback mirrors what you have there with the biggest complaints being food and and other than that we're having a great time we love your town that's what we hear over and over and over again so just anecdotally i, I want to throw that in there because we're talking to these people well, you know asking i think one way to get one way to what the easiest way to expand our insights is to get some of the lodging surveys i mean that's that i think is a really good idea that's a great idea so, talk to lodging people oh, hold on one second so my yeah and so one of the things I'm just kind of curious though about is like with the community survey, I'm really intrigued by the people who are unsatisfied. So like this is your home. Like, how can we make this better for you? For the tourism, I'm maybe less because like what if they just would not so good things that I think John, it's very hard to hear Michael. <laughs> sorry, sorry. 
what if what if coming to Woodstock just like wasn't a good idea for them? Because like for whatever reason they don't like Vermont countryside farm to table. You know, like they they came to the wrong place. I've had people come to me and say we should rally to bring a Trader Joe's to Woodstock. I'm like, well, Woodstock's just not a good spot maybe for you. You know, and so like that's a good when we look at sorry. Housing upstairs, TJ is downstairs, stick it right over in the east end, uh, sure. No, but like, the, the point is with like the tourism uh, survey and some of like the detracting, I would make sure that when we see people who are unsatisfied or have problems, like keep in mind like, okay, maybe like we don't have to meet them. I'm more interested, like when I looked at that, we all just jumped to the, the unsatisfied parts of it, but I saw that environment, feel, and beauty and the the most satisfied people were the people who came here to do outdoor activities. And I'm like, well, hell, rather than trying to spend money to give into those four people that Woodstock doesn't suck, let's bring 800 more people that want to come ride their mountain bikes. I think the, the what's the best thing about Woodstock gives us a real in, gives us further confirmation of what we should be communicating. I agree with that, Susie. Right. I think that um, I, I, I think that the why focus on the dissatisfied people. There's always opportunity to improve. That's like where really good kernels are. And I think if you were to dive into it, you're going to find people are frustrated with congestion. I think there's easy ways. And that sounds to me, based on the emails that you got, that there are ways to people will agree. You know, get rid of the non-profitable. Um, uh, tourists that yeah that just come they clog up the streets they take their photos and they contribute to congestion and that's it get rid of them and then I think you're going to see things go change for for residents yeah folks online any any comments you want to make I want to about the survey or survey everybody okay loud <laughs> I mean I can John I could just mirror Jeffrey and just say that that you know the anecdotal people are really happy even when you say oh it's diet monday i'm really sorry you can go <laughs> here that's, diet monday. that's awesome um <laughs> we you know people are are generally fine um and i i want to say one other thing and i know and i am not a huge proponent of buses so please understand that but the buses aren't taking up the parking spaces. We had more people come this year that drove themselves, couples that that drove here from away. Um, and I think that that's part of the parking issue. Yep. Okay. All right, so, I, so these are the survey results so far. A good idea to, a couple of multiple ways to expand the insights on what visitors are actually thinking. Um, uh let's just leave that i mean that's, that's valuable to, to yeah john can i yeah. agree Larry wants to say something. Larry, yeah go ahead yeah i i don't know when to interject this but uh, so i'm going to do it now is um the genesis of all of this was uh um uh, talking about the marketing budget and i just wondered what the process is going to be yeah. to pull this analysis and uh maybe fixing some of the problems and whatever how do we how are we going to tie that into marketing yeah or should so, i not even ask that question right no, no 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 i think that that's fair um the the it, it, the answer is the same as at least in my mind the the process is is as follows and i have i've my opinion about what the process should be hasn't changed so um so so you want to answer it or should I answer? No, no, I have, I have another yeah, question. Another second. Okay. So I think the way I see it is, is that the marketing, current marketing budget runs out at the end of February. Um, we need to, by then, have a discussion about the marketing plan. Greta and Marion are the new EDC representatives on the marketing committee. Jeff is also a member. Um, Patrick will be stepping aside. He's there to sort of help transition. Um, the uh, that I think that the I know that the marketing group is developing a series of proposals, one of which I'm sure will be 
to continue using the platform in the most effective way that they would recommend. Um, they've told us that the platform can't be really downsized, which, by the way, I agree with that. I know some people have questioned that, but it, 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 we're lucky to be getting the services we're getting for $100,000. It's ordinarily we would be paying a lot more for getting what we're getting. <laughs> and Class 4 has really you know, decided to serve us in that way. Um, but I have asked Greta and Marion to please make sure that the marketing group also comes back with a plan C, some alternative to 100 or zero. Last year, those were the only two options we had because of circumstances. And we made a decision. We picked between those two. Uh, and I suggested that we not um, be faced with that choice. Um, that will happen in either January or February. Um, in parallel with that, I'm going to suggest this tourism effort uh, should proceed, I think, with a public meeting to share the results of the survey and then begin to brainstorm and collect information from the public and brainstorm among them and us about which of the issues we should be looking at in more detail and starting to come up with ideas for, you know, our bus is the lowest hanging fruit or is food or what, you know, what are the three bus ideas or the five food ideas? or the parking ideas or the bathroom ideas or whatever it is. I don't think that that will be done by February. If it is, we will incorporate that into whatever decision we make when the marketing group comes back to us with options. But the reason why I have asked Greta and Marion to make sure that there is an option C, which, which is something other than 100 or zero with the current platform, is that I anticipate that we will not be done nearly done by February with understanding what the options are for us to do and what we need might need to fund. And therefore, that we need to have an option which says, we're not going to spend $100,000. We're going to do something different for a period of time until we can figure out what the, what the, tool, what the experience part of our tourism strategy is. I suppose this starts, I'm skipping over a point in the memo which was in sequence, Larry. So let me, let me go back to it in, in, in way of answering your question. I propose, I proposed last time, and I would, if we're ready to, I'd like to make a motion tonight to, to change the language of our marketing priority, not by eliminating marketing, but by defining it, our, our objective as, a, as developing and growing a sustainable tourism strategy. Exactly. That that provides a, 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 satisfact, a satisfying experience to residents, merchants, and visitors. And that, to me, has two legs to it. One is to attract people to Woodstock, because without it, you can't have a tourism economy. And the second is to invest and provide whatever is needed, or as much as we can, to give people who live here, work here, and visit here a satisfaction. So, and I don't think we will have that plan by February. And therefore, I think we need to have a kind of a temporary holding marketing plan. I don't think we should stop personally. I mean, we could decide on zero. That, that's our decision. Should we have a separate meeting just dedicated to that? No, we'll, we'll, we'll have a proposal from the marketing group. Yeah, I mean, coming to us when they are ready to bring it to us. Yeah. But my point is that I think we, we don't want to have just a zero or 100 proposal. And so we'll have three proposals, at least, <laughs> from the marketing group. And wherever we are, Larry, in this process of the tourism, of the analysis of how to provide a greater experience, if that's what we think we should do, it's what I think we should do, then we will take that into account when we vote on which of the marketing plans to have. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I, I guess so. I, it, I mean, it strikes me that the... the uh... The things that are considered problems would get worse if we, if our marketing goal was to increase the number of people who come here at, at certain times of year. If that's the case, then when we vote on the marketing budget, if that's the conclusion you've reached at that time, then you'll vote according to that belief. When are we going to have Marion and then when I forgot both of you are and then Roger then Susie. Yeah, just a quick question because I think the whole sort of like how we think this through was going to be based. How we think this through is going to be based on three surveys, and and 
And I'm wondering when we'll have, or when we think we'll have that information about how tourism is impacting the businesses. The merchants. We're yeah. going to, I, I hope we're going, I know, look, this is all taken long. Yeah. Thought. I think we have an opportunity to distribute the merchant survey next week because there's a meeting of the merchants and we, they'll all be in one, or many of them will be in one room and we have a printout of the survey. So, you know, the, and uh, Jeff and Beth may want to add a few questions to that. That's fine. We'll print it at the bottom. And so I think we can distribute a survey next week. We've already have our survey. And so we'll, I, I'm just thinking to have the full picture. Yeah, I think we'll have that full picture by by early December. Does that sound right? I mean, I, that's we're going to we're going to we have a survey. It's got 10, nine questions on it. We're going to print it out. We're going to give it to Jeff and Beth. They're going to have a meeting of the merchants. They're going to hand out the survey with our questions and theirs on it. I think we'll get it back. So we'll have, the answer is early December. Uh, no, I just yes, yeah, no, correct, and we'll, I will take that into it. I didn't, didn't mean to be yeah. to ignore that. Sorry. Okay, no, I, I, sorry, uh, Roger. Um, so I have Deborah. I have two or three points. I'll try to make them quickly. Okay. Um, in your statement of purpose, I think you I personally think that language needs to be okay. so that it isn't totally focused on tourism because there are other parts of this economy that the EDC can help impact oh, and that the that marketing is marketing communications should certainly to a considerable extent focus on the visitor economy but there's also other things that could be focused on like childcare or housing or 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 di just different things i think right. that you're begging the question with that statement um uh, or you're 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 narrowing the question with that statement okay. to, to an extent that I think I, I disagree with, but you know, that's okay. Um, the second is that I think that the marketing question is a lot simpler than we've made it out to be. Um, I don't think you need to have come up with all of the strategies to mitigate downsides of or, or dissatisfactions or whatever. I think you need to have a marketing plan that gets back to basics that is that is using appropriate and much less expensive technology to do the job that needs to be done, which is communicating and reaching out to visitors, residents, potential residents. And I don't think that's rocket science. I think it's it's and and I do think though that that an effort. What I would propose is you, you budget fifty thousand dollars next year to develop a website, and then. But this is gonna. But that's a, at least a two or three month process. So the sooner you make that decision on how much you're going to spend, and I don't see how you can justify continuing to spend over a hundred thousand dollars in the market. Okay. Thank you. So I want to talk with. Um, Larry said about the problem being, you know, too much tourism. I don't actually think, um, I think the problem is, is that we have too many of the wrong type of tourism tourists and we don't have enough of the, you know, the, the high quality tourists, you know, and that means, and I'm not talking about money, but like I'm talking about like what I, I tuned in on the same thing because this is what we came to Woodstock for was the right. natural beauty and that type of stuff. So I think, you know, people have a, you know, people have these feelings, especially after a, tour, a brutal tourist season that, you know, the too congested, they couldn't get to their stores. We couldn't even go all, all of October. We normally go do our shopping at the farmer's market. We couldn't even get through the streets. So we just didn't do shopping. So I think it's a problem of, you know, looking at the types of tourism that we're having, the types of the tourism that is um, problematic, how we can fix that and there are solutions, and then where, how you can get more of the other ones. I just, I don't like the idea of saying, well, tourism is a problem. Tourism, there are parts of, of tourism that are problematic, but they can be fixed. Okay, thank you. Yes. I'm just absorbing everything that's being said. just so many do it. Um, uh, the biggest thing that I wanted to say was that I would I, I would like to not vote on the language around um, the marketing tonight. I just feel like I need to I think we need to grok on that a little bit more because it's so important. And I think to just focus it on a tourist economy feels like it, it's 
negating so many wonderful things about Woodstock that's so important to the economy. And just so I think it would be really great if we could set up something um, where we can put our ideas into a, the hopper some way and pull them together and pull them together and then, you know, look at them, you know, and do a little wordsmithing for the, for the beginning of December on that. Uh, Cause I think that will be, that would be a, an exercise that's really important. Okay. Um, that's fine. I, I mean, one, you know, uh, th that's fine. I, I don't want to, I think, I think it's more than yeah. that. I, just to be clear, I, I, I know people hear marketing. Um, the word marketing doesn't, by the way, I agree. We, we definitely, let's continue to discuss this. Yeah. As you all go leave this meeting and begin to think about it, I just encourage you to go back to the memo. Yeah, no, I'm but just to be clear, right? The word marketing does not appear in the words that I propose. So when we discuss this next month, and we don't have to do it next month, I think in the next few months, yeah. we should come to it. With that, let me, let, the, the, sorry, let's just be clear. We currently have five objectives. Right? One of them is to market Woodstock. Amen, right? yeah. Until we change that, that is one of our five objectives, to market Woodstock. None of the other four touch on marketing or tourism. One of them in, indirectly does, which is rejuvenation of, of downtown. So the, the all I'm suggesting is is that is that I think we're leaving. Yeah. So, so, I just, so, so as you think, I'm not posing. I'm not advocating that we adopt my language. I'm trying to highlight what I think my language says, and most importantly, what it doesn't say. Okay, so I just wanted to finish. I thought I heard you say I'd like to vote on this tonight. I did. Oh, okay. On the on on the set. Uh, no, I'm totally fine. Not okay. we're definitely not going to vote on it because there's more discussion to be had. Okay. What I wanted to vote on was the sentence that's in the memo. Okay. So and and then the other piece of it, which which deals with, I I feel kind of snobbish about like this isn't the right kind of tourist. That always kind of like. like you know, but I understand it, but I also get a little bit like, ooh, you know, and and yet um, there's, you know, to to gear towards certain types of events or certain types of people. And that's I think about when I was a kid here and how every little corner of Woodstock had an artist and had, a you know, a craftsman and had a, and it feels like the the that that could be a part of our marketing. And the fact that, it, you know, the graph showed that it was about the environment and that, and then it went down for dining, which was kind of heading down in the middle. And that cultural was way down here. Well, but it's still 75%, by the way. The, the okay, but still, okay, 75. Lower. It's lower. lower, but to get that higher, that kind of uh, tourist that we may want, that the cultural thing needs to be higher and that marketing some of the cultural things and some of the artists and some of the other things may help us. And so I just, so I, I, I would, I would head towards marketing some of our, some of our, our talent right. and some of the other things I, I would, I would, I would think about that in our languaging of our, of our, of our resources, not just our, our, um, our, um, our, our, our stores, our right. talent, our in town. So, well, just to be, all right. So, just to be clear, I, I am not. I am. It's we're at at the end of our meeting. We're not going to vote on this tonight. But I do want to leave you with the language that I, I'm I'm proposing because it does not mention stores. It does not mention marketing. It leaves completely open and presumably something to absolutely pursue every single thing that you just said. What I'm proposing we do, and until we do this, our priority is to market Woodstock, period, full stop. And so until we change it, that's what we are obligated to pursue. I think the data suggests that pursuing our current priority of marketing Woodstock, full stop, is not what's in the best interest of our community. And so I think we should change it, not tonight. It doesn't matter, we don't have to do it tonight. But, and I think, so something that we might wanna change it to, which if you listen to the, carefully to this, everyone, 
I think gives us the space to come to deal with all of the subtleties and not like in December and January, like over the next two years, <laughs> right? Instead of marketing Woodstock, we could say as our one of our priorities, not the, this is not the EDC's priority, it's the EDC's one of five priorities, is to develop and grow a sustainable tourism, sustainable tourism economy that provides a positive experience to residents, merchants, and visitors. So, 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 so no, that's, I'm saying precisely what that says, nothing more, but nothing less. In the context of five, of the five it's it says what it says no it, it it leads us down a path of looking at a range of issues that are broader that include all the issues we're looking at now and broadens that range right now our objective is marketing woodstock that's what we voted on. We had a year's worth of discussion. We had eight public meetings in it. We voted on it. We wrote it down. We went to the select board. They agreed. So, so I think that what this does, or some, or some, it doesn't have to be these words. It could be something else. I mean, but, but what? Yeah. No, no. I, I'm not. I'm not arguing for that. I'm trying to. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry, Greta. Go ahead. I was just going to say, do you want the quick Cliff Notes version of the, the update about marketing before we adjourn, just because it yes. might also clear up a couple of things we've talked about? Yes, please do. Or just address a couple of things. So um, the marketing working group, and um, we've, just, we've, we've got some things coming up for WASAIL, the holidays, Thanksgiving, um, that are being worked on, and um, uh, a couple cool initiatives for giving Tuesday and small business Saturday that are going out to that big email list that'll hopefully um, drive people to be buying from Woodstock based businesses. Um, and, and it's, and it's uh, more targeted than just sending it to out to everyone. It's, you know, it's going to be, Oh, you, you know, did this sort of thing. Maybe you want to buy that, um, that item that you saw at uh, unicorn or something. It, it's, it's a targeted thing. Anyway, there there's, that's going out. That's one of the initiatives. Um, we're also really the marketing group and class four is paying close attention to all of these survey results and very aware that um, the initiatives are likely going to be shifting in 2024. And I would like to um, just mention that class four is um, they are they they're working on on a, um, you know a, a proposal that's not just going to be all or nothing. Um, so I, I want to say that. When we come to the comes to January, February, we start talking about these budgets and everything. Um, it's likely that we'll have a few different options or a few different combination of ways that we can go about it. Um, and Marion, do you want to add anything to that? Um, I, I maybe just the fact that those, um, you know, I'm, I'm new to this, so really, you know, I'm just trying to kind of get up to speed. But I know that. Uh, those two emails that you mentioned that are um, Giving Tuesday and Small Business Saturday are really mostly directed at online shopping. So they're they're actually designed not to drive physical people here. Uh, and so that's, I think, maybe a test of that concept as well. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, thank you. Can I, can I ask, uh, um, um, I've, seen the programs put in the listserv and it says the edc is doing this and that and i don't know anything about it and um i only had one instance of somebody asking me and i said i just didn't know what it was so can we when you have these programs that you're going to um uh advertise in the listserv and whatever could you just send out a memo to the the group so we know 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 what it is absolutely that the list on the listserv post came from patrick and we weren't aware he was putting that on there but um that for sure going forward that makes a lot of sense and Yes. Okay. Um, so, uh, public uh, public meeting. I, we are going to have to go over just for a minute. I don't want to, you know, just make this up. Um, I think we should meet before Thanksgiving. Yes. I think the meeting should have two parts. Uh, one is a presentation. So three parts. Um, a presentation of the results 
a kind of some statement about what the EDC includes from this, which I was hoping would be the single sentence that I drafted, because I think actually, once you back away from it, it's pretty hard to not agree with it. Even in the language that's written. Uh, it be, so I, I actually, just as I think about the public meeting, I think there need I think there need to be three parts. There needs to be a part one, which is here's what the survey shows. There needs to be a part three, which is let's start to talk about the ideas. It's control of this issue within the realm of the EDC and sort of says this is what we've concluded. And here's you know. And well, so that, maybe what, what maybe, I just, maybe an opening statement clarifying that would probably be helpful. I, I agree. Um and then, right, right. And then, then I'd like to during the course of the meeting. Right. I'd like to suggest the, the opening statement. Okay. Which is the sentence that I read. Right. But let me just explain why. We basically, rehearsed it. basically, what what I'm suggesting is right now we have a single prong priority among five: housing, childcare, rejuvenation of the downtown, supporting defense. The fifth one is market Woodstock. It seems to me that what the survey suggests is that when we talk about marketing Woodstock, we should also be talking about giving giving our constituents positive experiences. It's as simple as that. That's all all this says is, and maybe the, maybe that's the way to say it is is that. Yeah. I'm yeah. So, Question. Right. What you're saying now is a part of what people said on marketing Woodstock. You know, right. what we asked. Right. We, in other words, let, let's have a two. Let's have our first priority have two pieces that we think about. How do we market Woodstock? Market, you know, how do we market Woodstock? By the way, maybe exactly the way we're doing it now. Maybe totally different from the way we're doing it now. Maybe more expensively than we're doing it now. Maybe less expensively than we're doing it now. Maybe including Deb all of the things that you were describing that would be important. Maybe not. A any of those things. But let's keep marketing Woodstock. That's implicit in the notion of develop and grow a tourism economy. You can't develop and grow a tourism economy without marketing. It doesn't say anything, anything about other than that we have marketing. <laughs> and, and then the second, the second piece is that there's clearly, there are clearly concerns on at least serious con enough concerns, justified or not, by our local community. There's some indication that visitors might be satisfied, although it's you know they're they're pretty satisfied, and we haven't heard from the merchants yet. So it, improving the experiences or addressing the concerns that people have also needs to be part of it. So to me, that all this says is those two things need to be part of what we think about, and that's a conclusion that the EDC has never made. Mm -hmm. In fact, we have explicitly. Not made it. it right. Yeah. And so to me, the most important thing we can do at a simple level and the way to to get us off of is it 68% or 72% and get us onto if we all agree that we shouldn't have buses, let's start talking about how do we not have buses is to basically make the commitment that says, look, the EDC now stands now understands we can we don't have to debate the extent of it, but we understand that that our first objective or number one, it's not the most important, but it's first it has to be first on the list is is a two part thing. It has to do with attracting people. And it has to do with giving us and them a good experience. That's all it says. Now, maybe my words don't say that There's a better way to say it is fine with me, but I would like to be able to say we've concluded that. Uh, in November, unless you, and by the way, I, that's just my opinion. If you guys don't think we should say that we don't have to, we can still have the meeting. So that, that's sort of, if we could just talk about that, let me just get the EDC members feedback on that point first. And it's really, by the way, it's okay. If you guys don't agree, that's fine too. And if you want, we can work out, well, I think we need to have the wording. We can say it somewhat differently, but let's just, how, how do people, Michael, you look like you're. Yeah, no, I, I agree with the notion of it. I think the word that everyone's getting stuck on is the word tours and the, the heavy emphasis of it into, you know, the, it being what is the driver of our economy versus just calling out the economy. Okay, I see what you're saying. Okay, all right, yes. So yeah, okay. Better explanation. Fair enough. Okay, fair enough. 
Okay. Well, there's no, there's no, no, I think what we're saying is we're not sure that, I mean, Bridgewater doesn't have visitors. So I think what, what you're exactly right. You're exactly greater right. than that. Okay. It's yep. greater than that. All right. So, so the, that's exactly right. right. I was hoping to avoid this, but, but no, 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 but it's, so you started with me. So you did a bad job. <laughs> I just don't think it's going to happen in that. Okay. No, 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 no. We're not going to resolve this tonight. We have a simple choice. All right. No, I just wanted to make a comment, but okay, no, no. When when you allow it. Sorry. I wanted to make a comment when you allow it. Okay, Ty, as soon as we need to have a discussion about what are the different ways in which the Woodstock economy can succeed. Right. We need to have that discussion. Okay. Um it's a shame that in the over the time that I've at least been on the EDC, that in the 15 meetings at least that we've had to talk about what our list of priorities are, that that list of priorities doesn't reflect what we think our economy can be, which is the only thing I can conclude from the fact that we still want to talk about what our economy can be. We. I don't so know how I many. I don't know how many times. I mean, I have to tell you that I'm personally frustrated. That I, it's not any person, but uh, collectively, I, I don't know how many times we can have that discussion. It's fine with me if we change it, but it strikes me that the overall set of our priorities isn't the kind of thing that should change quarterly. And we've talked about it over and over and over and over again. Now that doesn't mean we don't think it should be talked about again. If we think it needs to be talked about again, it needs to be talked about again. But I'm just disappointed that in our discussion of our priorities, and by the way, you weren't, you know, weren't part of that, you're coming, coming in new, but that's, I think, not why you're raising the question. You're raising a legitimate question, and many people have, you know, let's attract, you know, let's make it a high-tech hub for entrepreneurs, whatever. I, you know, so, so yeah. I think that that's really the thing. So maybe what we do is maybe what we say is, look, it, it's not, Let's do two things in parallel. Let's not make the statement at this public meeting that tourism is is the driver or an important driver, or even that we, I mean, I suppose we could go, I don't know how far we want to back off from it, but one, maybe, maybe can we admit that one element of our economy is tourism? Yeah, absolutely. No, I don't, I, I can't agree. Yeah. I, I have to say something. I, I'm yeah. so sorry that, uh, Michael, you have to understand something. I don't know, how, how many years have you lived here? Four. Four, okay. I've lived here 52. Tourism is the major economic engine in Woodstock. Has been, is going to be. And that's, that part's not going to change. And so, although some people might disagree with me, I, 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 I'm convinced that the majority of people would understand that that is the major economic engine in Woodstock and that the 600 or more employees of the tourist industry in Woodstock are really important. And the people you're supporting with your housing program, majority of them are working in that industry, the majority, not all of them. And um, John's words, which expanded beyond marketing to include the experience people have, both residents and visitors, I think are, were really good words. And we need to sustain that economic engine. So uh, to, to, down, to downgrade tourism as being important is a huge mistake. I, I think for it. Hold on, hold on. Wait a minute. I think that's what's being said. All right, Joe. I haven't said five words yet. I'm going to say oh. plenty right now. All right, Joe, go ahead. I think we have to fully recognize, and I'm sorry, I got to push back, Mike. Woodstock has or is a tourist-based economy. I've been saying that for years. It is. It's reality. We don't have an agricultural economy in Woodstock any longer. We don't have an industrial uh, economy in this in this town. We have a tourist 
based economy. We have to recognize that, accept that, in my opinion. But the question is, how do we handle it? That is the question, in my opinion. Not that, oh, is it or isn't. It is. Yep. Okay, how do we handle it? So, and I, that's where these surveys, I think, are very valuable. Because not only are we a tourist-based economy, it is the home of a lot of people here, too. And that has to be a sensitive issue. So I think, my opinion, our goal, our job, is to see how we handle this tourist-based economy and not negatively affect the people who live here. Yeah, well, that's my endeavor. I want to make sure that I'm clear with what I was saying about why the why the wording of it at that at the beginning was bothering me. Um, putting it front, it is a tourist basis economy. We're all we all you know we know that. It, yeah, nobody wants. I mean, it is what it is. This it is. is what it is. You know, I mean, it is. I, I, I'm wanting to finesse it because I also think culturally, yes. who if, if, if we're just focused, and I'm not saying we're just focused, but if the wording is just about tourist base, you know, the functionality of a tourist base um, economy without having at the forefront who we are culturally, who we wanna be culturally, what we wanna do culturally as a community that needs to be at the forefront yeah, you didn't hear what i said i i did when i said what so the important thing is is, is how do you yeah. manage it i under i under and that's where you come and that's where that comes i think in. she's agreeing with you I'm, I, I'm, I was not disagreeing. I'm not disagreeing i'm just saying in the you i want to be careful in the wording is the thing that five years from now when we're all gone, not dead and gone or whatever, but when we're like what we're setting in motion, we want to set in motion so it's not that it's not just this is a tourist-based economy and it it runs away from us. And we want to set it up, we want to set it up that there the cultural is in the forefront. That's what and, and, yeah, well, I know. But, but I am I take Michael's point though about the wording and, and I think it's the word I'm, 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 I'm just saying, I'm saying yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. And also, like, um, it, like for me, it's, it's definitely what I'm saying. We're like, let's look at supporting marketing the economy. Yeah. I'm not saying that that's not a tourism economy. Right, right, right. I'm saying that, like, well, maybe limiting it to a tourism economy is going to leave things that might not be right of mind or be top of mind outside right. of that. And so that's that's one piece of it. And the second piece, though, in thinking a little bit about the role of this body and, you know, just like how we're perceived by the public, uh, I think a lot of people look at tourism as a problem in town. We saw that, that there was a fair amount of that. And that if we then come out and say, well, our marketing isn't to market to talk about how this is a, a great place to live, a great place to live. It's focused on tourism. We are doubling down that we're exasperating potentially a problem in their eyes without us fully understanding it based on the other two surveys. Right. Culture. Roger and, and I want to make so, sure. Um, I, okay. All right. Roger. Susan. I, I agree completely with what Mike is saying. I think it's said more artfully than what I said. I don't think that anybody with a rack, uh, with a modicum of rationality is saying that tourism is not a huge component of right. this economy, but there are other components of the economy. And I think you can do marketing communications. If you do it well, you can do it so you're communicating with multiple constituencies. And to Deborah's point, you're communicating about mountain biking and gravel grinding and cross country skiing and things that are potentially have the opportunity to change to some extent the the tenor of the kind of visiting visitation we get. I'm not saying it's going to be solved. And I'm one of those people who has said from the beginning, we have to spend money marketing communications. I think we have to spend it more, more strategically differently than we have been. But absolutely, we need to support a tourism 
the tourism as a critical component of the Woodstock economy. I don't think anybody with any sense is going to say otherwise. Okay, Disney. But I also think that a critical part of the Woodstock economy is all the people like myself and Mike and all these other people who work out of state. We bring our money into here. We go shopping. We hire, um, you know, I have a contractor coming in. I've got a painter coming in. All of that, you don't see it because they don't have a storefront, but that is very much a part of the of the uh, the economy. And in terms of revenues earned for the town, we are much that part of the economy is much more important than the tourism. Which is which is why we have a priority to provide childcare capacity mm -hmm. and to provide housing. I'm not and arguing with that. I'm just saying it rankles me when we just say that we are a tourist community. Oh. No, we're retired. I think. Yeah. Let me. Um, the, I'm on the board of a of a clothing company, and we make uh, a whole range of products for uh, for Polo Ralph Lauren. It's now grown to be seventy percent of our business, and we are very very excited about that seventy percent, and it scares the shit out of us. Because every four years we have to renew the contract with Polo Ralph Lauren, and if they cut that contract, there's no ratcheting back like there is in Woodstock, where we can, you know, it's we lose, we basically go out of business. Tour that I think is the, and so we spend a lot of time thinking about that other thirty percent. We not as much time as we spend thinking about the seventy percent because that's really important to our profitability. That to me is sort of an analogy with Woodstock. The first objective to have an objective that focuses on seventy percent. So I don't think it's wrong to have an uh, to have an objective that says that, that. By the way, takes what is now clearly an inadequate priority, market Woodstock, and clarifies that the only then the only sustainable way to market Woodstock in the future is to make sure that people have good tourism experiences, tourism experiences, not economic experiences, but tourism experiences. But what I'm hearing is, and what I experience in this other company is, that's not enough. We also need to talk about, we also need to show a commitment to the 30% or whatever the percentage is in Woodstock. And I would rather, rather than talk about, rather than watering down what I think is a really important and responsive improvement to our tourism objective. I'd rather make that improvement to our tourism objective. It's a huge improvement to say it's not just about getting more people here. It's also about giving them and us a good experience. That's it, it's a tourism point. It's not a life point. Right. It's a tourism point. But I would maybe what we should do is to say and while we're while we're recognizing the importance of tourism. Let's also recognize that there's more than tourism, and let's have a second. Let's add a second objective that's un, not not about supporting tourism, but is about. I mean, you could call it diversifying the economy beyond tourism. You could talk about w whatever words we want to use. Let's do and let's not do one without the other. Let's not do the tourism sentence without the other sentence, because that then gives you know the, the, your point of view, which I share. Um, I, I'm more skeptical. It, it it gives your point of view a home, and for the people who who, who for whom that's important, mm -hmm. you know. And again, for this for our company, the company that I'm on the board of, it's really important because we're scared, and it's we're scared of the same thing that the people who are about tourism are scared about. It's like, yeah. what if you know? <laughs> we need well, we need exactly. to do it. I mean, it's, so, it, it, so, it, it, so the tourism thing can suck up all the oxygen and down. Right. And that isn't what I'm suggesting. I think the reality is we are a tourist-based economy. That's where most of our money is generated from. And, I, and I'm saying, and I'm saying, okay, that's the reality. How do we manage it so it fits with our lifestyle? How does it manage it so it's it's as beneficial to the residents as it is to the people who come here? I, I don't want to put words in Michael's mouth, but I think what you might be saying, and I've wondered this, and not wondered this, I think. It, is that there's a group of people in Woodstock that are not insubstantial who basically don't want this to be a tourism economy. That's right. Right. Sure. So I think we need what you're suggesting is let's recognize that. Yeah. And the way to recognize it is, is would be to say, okay, let's 
let's put some effort against trying to envision alter not alternatives, additions to that. Maybe even alternatives. Excuse me, use the word the last meaning resilient, making it re more resilient. Well, but but let's be more. But let's broader, but, right? But, but let's, relying on on Ralph Lauren. It's it's yeah. It's, but well, but uh, uh, yeah. Let let's. I don't want to. Yeah, like no matter how we like. Uh, put lipstick on it, tourists aren't coming in late March when it's mud season, right? And so what's our tourism spend? And But that's when the businesses are having the biggest issue with keeping staff and keeping people employed. So to me, it's like, well, then what's the marketing spend there? It's not tourism support and spend. Well, we're it's not, a good example well, of like a very real thing that like you hear from the small business owners that that's their their hard time of year isn't to try and make it during the tourism season. Right. Marketing and make it when it's just locals here. Right. So we, but marketing isn't if we follow the, the direction I'm suggesting, marketing marketing will no longer be a priority. The purpose of marketing will be the priority. In other words, and now what we're suggesting is that there are, let's just say to keep it simple, two purposes of marketing. One is to grow and develop a sustainable tourism economy. And the other is to figure out how we can diversify our economy and market that. I think right. that's a really good <laughs> okay. So, so, okay, does that, does that work? And that comes back to what so, I so said. So marketing becomes a manager. tool. How do you manage yeah, exactly. yep. The marketing is... is Whatever, don't you're trying to answer the question. So mm -hmm. what, what... I think this public meeting... I think you the reason why you raised the, the comment about and, and Deborah did too about the wording is we don't want to miss this point in a big public meeting because there's going to be lots of people there and it's people, not going to be tourists, it's going to be <laughs> right, obviously. Right. Yeah. So, so can we can, in this context it, it, I, I like diversifying rather than resilience, it, uh, the whole point of both of these legs, tourism and something other than tourism, is resiliency. But I, I like the word diversifying because it explicitly says something other than, yep. which I think is, you know, what your objective was, it just says tourism, and right. what it needs to say something other also. Yeah. So if we were to go to this public meeting and say that right now we have an objective called marketing Woodstock, but that's not the right objective. It's a it's an action. It's a tactic. It's not a purpose. The right. purpose isn't to market Woodstock. Our purpose is to have a sustainable, right. resilient economy, and that we're going to replace that priority with two priorities. One is the wording that I said, focused on tourism, to develop and grow a tours a sustainable tourism economy that provides good experience to merchants, residents, and visitors. And secondly, is to develop. Option options and approaches for diversifying our economy beyond tourism. And I think Deb, your cultural point fits into both of it. You know, it yeah. isn't limited, or yeah. it can easily fit in if that's what we think is an important dimension. It can fit into one or, or both of those. That's right. And it addresses. And the only thing that I would say, as long as it doesn't say beyond tourism, because I think even in, I'm not trying to our economy. Period. Because I'm not trying to say to go beyond tourism. I don't like shit. Fine. When I go to places, I don't Google like what's the best tourist thing to do in Chicago. Right. I'm like, where's the best roast beef? Where's the best right. thing? And I want to have what the locals are okay. doing. Right. So I look for not the tourist experience. Okay. So it's right. So, so this is not to so to explore our options for diversifying our economy. And I can okay. Yeah. So if we then announce that as 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 our two prior priorities to replace marketing Woodstock. And to make very clear, when we say replace marketing Woodstock, whenever I describe, in fact, at the last meeting, I had a graphic which had those words on it, developing a sustainable tourism. And then underneath it, it had two boxes, marketing and experience. Yeah. Right, I mean, just to make it clear that marketing is, you know, we don't. Yeah, I got it. Right? Yeah, we so, got it. So. Well, they're, they're intertwined. Well, I can see how this could um, easily derail if you say things like Woodstock is a tourist economy, Woodstock is a tourist town. No, it just, you know, just, you know, just, I mean. Lifestyle. It's a, you know, I mean, I'm not, other work. You just say, you know, Woodstock is a community of people because the fact of the matter is, is that most of the money that, that runs the town does come from taxpayers and people who live here and the money that we bring in. Um, so if you just say, was talking, you know, tourism is an important part of our community. That's all you need to say, and you will not derail the. No, I, I, I'm going to use the following words. 
precisely these words. I actually, we can vote this down. Well, okay, I'm not. Well, let me ask the EDC members. Are you? Here's what I would like to make a motion. I don't want to. I don't want to force it to be all that formal if people aren't ready yet. But what I'd like to say is that we're going to take the priority marketing Woodstock, and we're going to. We're going. And maybe we don't even say that this is formally. This is what we've 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 discussed. We haven't voted on it yet, but this is what we've discussed, and we're going to vote on it at the next meeting or something like that. So we don't have we don't box ourselves in. Or if any of you have still have, you know, tweaking or whatever you'd like to do. But I'm going to basically say that I think that where we're headed is to, to replace the objective of marketing Woodstock with develop with two things. One is developing and growing a sustainable tourism economy that provides a positive experience to residents, merchants, and visitors. And secondly, to explore options and develop plans, as that is more tangible, explore options and develop plans for diversifying our economy. For diversification. Thumbs up. And I think so, Deborah, what are you, are you, are you? I'm, 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 I'm thinking. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm so, trying to come so, up with. I'm not going to come in. Okay. So, so this is, this is where I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to come up with and I'm playing with is another word besides a tourist economy. And I understand that's what it is. I'm not arguing with anybody about it. I'm understanding the sensitivity to it. And the other thing I'm also understanding is what you said, which is when I go someplace, when I visit someplace, I don't want to go to the Eiffel Tower. I don't want to go to the Statue of Liberty. I want to know where the cool barbecue place is that the local goes to. But, right? it's, but you're still a tourist. I understand I am, but you I don't want to look like you want to go to Barbecue or Eiffel Tower. You're still a tourist. I understand that. I understand that. But I also understand that there there is a stigma to it. And if this is I and I'm just that's why I put my head down. I was like, if I could come up with another phrase that could make the locals happy and that could work with something else, you know, and still be the thing, that's what I'm playing. Okay. With. I that's all I'm okay. Let me, let me it works fine. That language yeah, I'm just have, asking how to work on it, but let me just say one thing. And if also, you don't have my opinion, go with it. No, 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 there's a stigma to oh. diversify. Let me just put it out there. There's a stigma to diversifying our economy to that's that concept. There's yes. a stigma to both. The stigma to diversifying our economy is it's wasted money. Get real. If anyone is get real, yeah. And so I, I'm not. I'm not arguing. I'm just that. That both of those statements are true. I, and I understand. Say anything about I, my point. No, your point is you want to get. You want to avoid the word tourism that because it has a stigma. I want to come up with the yeah. same. I like concept. I understand, but it, it's the concept that is stigmatizing. Is exactly right. I it's mean, the I concept that's stigmatizing. You go someplace. The last thing you want to admit is that I'm a tourist. What you want to say is, hey, where do truck drivers get their coffee in the morning? That's where I want to go. But you're still a tourist. You hate to admit it, but you are. You are a resident. When you hear people say, we are a tourist economy, then you're saying that my needs are not important because what's more important is the tourist. And so this is yep. what I like about what John is saying. But I've been actually studying the issue of global tourism quite a bit. And that's one of the things that makes tourism successful <laughs> is when the residents benefit as much mm -hmm. as the but Right. Well, 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 I guess what I'm trying to say is there are other people who, when you say, I don't want to use the word, they say, you're going to waste my money and ruin my property values. Yeah. And I'm not saying which yeah. group is right. And I know that I'm just going to guess that, that, that you can't or maybe Deborah can't feel that way. Don't feel that way. Fair enough. I, I'm not saying it. I'm just saying that there are people who do feel that way. And so when we, when we say it, we're sort of, I think, at a point where we have to use, be able to use the T word. Rather than a diversified yeah. economy, can we say a resilient yeah. economy? Sure. Or something, something that just I, diversified. I don't, have, I don't have a horse in the race. I'm yeah. just trying to come up with okay. other options. I mean. I, I think that the, the language that, that you came up with is, is splitting the baby in the most effective way. Um, I, 
I, I don't, you know, I, I might not love how many tourists are here, but the fact is, yes, it's an important part of the economy. It keeps some of the stores open that I'm interested in going to. So, and, and I agree with what you're saying that we've thought of a goal is marketing Woodstock, which is not a goal at right. all. It's a strategy or a tactic. To achieve some goal. And so the goal is to keep our economy. And I think you've done it perfectly. Why, why don't I do this? Why don't we do this? Why don't I ref simply at the public meeting, because I do think we have to say that where the EDC is at a very broad conceptual level. Why don't I simply describe this conversation that we've had briefly and just simply say the EDC is working through this. Here are some of the word. Here are some of the words that were proposed. Here are some of the reactions to those words, and we're going to continue to work on it. Now let's let's remember that's item two. Item one is here's what we learned from the surveys. Item two is here's what the EDC is is in the process of concluding. Haven't concluded it yet, and here's what we're debating around it. But we all agree. Let's get started on trying to think about some of the problems that the survey has identified, and let's get to work on it. Can I can I put one in and just sure. like, well, you vote it down or not? But like, what's the first line it's, uh, that goes into the econ um, tourist economy? The blah 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 tourist economy. No, de uh, developing and growing a sustainable tourist economy. Developing a grow and growing a sustainable visitors economy. No, because that sounds like a thing. I'm just all of these words. Guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna include all the words. I'm gonna say tourist, I'm gonna say resilient. Yeah. And you all, you all will be there or can be there. You all will be there at this meeting, which we need to decide a date on. Yeah, to date. <laughs> exactly. We're, we're gonna, we're gonna all be there. And if if there's a word that I forget to mention, and you'll mention, that's fine. Right. So. So, so good. That, I think this was, you know, we didn't resolve the issue, but it was a productive discussion. It shows where we are, and we're going to continue to, you know, yeah. to work on this issue. So, I think we kind of all agree on the concept I, I, of splitting. I, 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 I agree. I, I agree, and I, right, I, I agree, and I think, yeah. So yeah. we're, we're, I agree. We're, we're, we're in agreement on the broad direction which we need to go, and therefore. The meeting, the second half of the public meeting has some purpose. It's something, it fits into something that's an EDC objective, which is how can we address some of these issues? It's not the only thing we're going to do, but that's one of the things we're going to do. So folks online, are you comfortable with this? Um, yeah. John, are you going to set a public meeting tonight? Yes. All right. Because uh, it hasn't been clear. <laughs> yes. I'm going to propose, since Thursday evening seemed to be a time, um, I'm going to propose the 16th, which is two weeks from now. Right before Thanksgiving, right? The, oh, is, is that, that's not, doesn't conflict with Thanksgiving? It's the week before Thursday. Thanksgiving. The 23rd? 23rd is Thanksgiving. It's Thanksgiving. Yeah, 23rd is Thanksgiving. Oh, well, we could also do it. Thanksgiving Day. We could also do it the, the 29th. Uh, so, sorry? Well, uh, we could do it the yeah, 29th. I think that that's fine as long as it doesn't get in the way of people. That's Wednesday. Oh, sorry, Thursday the thirtieth. The thirtieth. Does that work? Yeah. Folks on the screen, is November thirtieth Thursday? I didn't hear what was wrong with the sixteenth. It it just it's it's soon. Look. Oh, okay. I can do the sixteenth or the thirtieth. Okay. There is some more analysis. The 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 open-ended comments, we can do a little bit more analysis of that, and, you know, it, and also, you know, I have to think about how we're going to describe tonight's meeting. That's going to take me more than two weeks. <laughs> no, no, I have to do it. I have to do it by a deadline of Tuesday, John. So. <laughs> <laughs> you just so I'd appreciate any help you can give me in that regard. Right, so let's just say the 30th. That, it just gives us more time to kind of reflect on it. Okay. Cool. So the 30th and and is 
do we want to encourage to encourage people? I, the sandwich is obviously with such a. Yes. But do you want to make it at six o'clock? This is another. Uh, yeah, yeah, or even six o'clock and have pizza. Is that? I nothing is going to make that easier. <laughs> we could have yeah. child care. <laughs> Uh, yeah, okay. I'll just bring him. No, it's fine. We, uh, yeah. Well, people can join by Zoom. I mean, it is it's always be. Yeah. I think, um, like the 5 30, 6 o'clock spot is probably great for people, but 5 30 is a little bit early. So, 6 o'clock is a compromise and pizza. Is that is that okay with pizza? Yes, for pizza. Um, sure. Okay. Right. I just think it was. Interesting. Sandwiches from Toledo that you got. It was a whole. I got a wholesale deal on. Oh my yeah, god! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that coming from Toledo. Oh man. Six o'clock on Thursday, no, November thirtieth. Punished. And um, yeah, and it'll be similar presentation of the surveys and then basic brainstorming. We'll have. We won't make. We're obviously not making any decisions, right? We're just going to have brainstorming. Someone will have several of you be scribes and writing down ideas. In different categories and all that kind of general good stuff, right? Okay, thank you. Okay, we have adjourn. a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Any all, all in favor? Aye. 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 And, and Aye. Opposed. Thank you, Greta. Sorry, thank guys. Everyone. John, I'll um, John, I'll send you, I'll send you a, a Dropbox with the link to the recording in the morning. Okay, thanks. All your fault, John, because you said we were going to end. It. I know. You know what? I what happened there? I have never. Nice job, John.